of some key inflation data coming up this time tomorrow morning. We'll get the latest reading on uh, CPI at uh, 8.30 here. 8.30, that feels like 7.30 still, if you're on the, uh, in North America anyways, Eastern Time Zone, gets uh, an hour removed over the weekend. So, uh, happy Monday. We are uh, under a little bit of pressure here. A ton of things moving around, though, as far as individual movers are concerned. We'll talk about Tesla back uh, under operation or back going again over in uh, Berlin. Rivian trying to extend this move back to the upside. Uh, some analysts coming out talking uh, a little bit positively. Uh, some cautiously as well on the R2 and the R3 platform after the big move back up following that launch last week. We'll touch on uh, AI here coming up this morning as well. A few things moving around uh, to discuss. It's Monday, March 11th, 2024. TraderTV.Live starts now. Yeah, there's the overall market. The queue's back downside here this morning. That was Friday. We're uh, a little bit lower here in the pre-market right now. 436 coming into play currently. Oh, yeah, Bitcoin's over 72,000, if I didn't mention that. Uh, so that rally continues this morning as well. So everything uh, crypto related to the upside. MSTR moving around here a little bit as well. Michael Saylor was on uh, CNBC with a huge smile on his face, as, as he uh, should have right now. So, yeah, anything Bitcoin is very, very positive to start the week. Happy Monday. Happy Monday as well. Yeah, it's still D different this time around, guys. We've been making this point for a little while. No stimulus checks to really artificial, uh, artificially inflate the price of Bitcoin this time. It's a lot more organic. Overnight, we got word that the Financial Conduct Authority out of England is going to let these ETNs, these exchange-traded... Um, Something or another here, Brendo, something like an ETF uh, essentially uh, to, to be allowed in uh, that exchange on the FTSE. So we're going to have to wait and see how that has an effect on the price. Yeah, uh, nothing but upside right now. That is for sure. A few things to note here. That's the S&P. Uh, so basically the same thing as far as the daily chart is concerned. We are downside again uh, here pre-market so far this morning. There is uh, very little in the way of both economic data and even Fed speakers to look forward to today. But as I mentioned, a uh, big day coming up tomorrow with uh, the latest reading on inflation at 8.30. So market in a bit of a uh, wait and see pattern here, guys, ahead of that. Good morning. Good morning. Wait and see. Morning. Yeah, well, there's been enough act. I don't know, the market hasn't been doing that much waiting this morning. I, I guess if you've been following uh, some pre-market action, like NVIDIA was in the 890s. When I sat down, it touched down uh, at the 860s at some lows. So the NASDAQ is down 0.5%. This was up a percent when I sat down, now down 0.5%. You know how big the move was on some of the chip names leading off with this last week. And then tomorrow, we get the ARM expiration. Uh, well, the IPO lockup. It's not expiration. The IPO lockup for ARM should be an exciting We'll see, days or weeks or whatever it turns out to be. That's been an absolute bear. I think it continues uh, to be weak and got to prove me otherwise. You had some issues with Boeing again. So there to the downside, looking for some shorts underneath 197 there. And as you can see, I mean, Bitcoin still strong and still undefeated. That's the thing about that false breakout. We've seen this at even dollar levels. And we saw it again on Friday. Basically, ran the, BTC ran the tops and then fell. But what was so different about it it was when the market kept falling off of that moment, Bitcoin rallied. Like everything topped out when Bitcoin turned off the $70,000 level, but Bitcoin rallied when everything else kept on going down. So that was, an, that was a sign of strength you could see all afternoon. Leading into today, fresh all-time highs. Yeah, amazing. Uh, we've been talking. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another Monday. It should be a fun day here. We're already in iBit, by the way. Uh, I bought some of that. I just feel, feel like we're, we just broke 72,000, so we went long ahead of that, but just right now. So we're going to be long Bitcoin here at 72,000 via iBit. And then look at, I was just writing the sticky note right now. Look at Coinbase. I mean, 273, up another 6.5%. Wow, we were talking about shorting this in this name and we made that move all the way down in. When it came back up, man, we haven't said the word short at, at all on Coinbase. This name just continues to rip upside. 
what what a relationship with Bitcoin and Coinbase seems to be absolutely insane here. But uh, yeah, really interested on AMD today. That's looking at two bills. You know, NVIDIA, that's looking at a nice high as well up there in and around 900, as Neil mentioned there today earlier and really dropping in now. So uh, we'll have to wait to see. But yeah, we've already taken out 860. The way this thing fell on Friday uh, can be pretty dramatic. So we already know that. Okay, here we go. We're in one name. It's iBit. And we're excited for today. We should have Michael Noss coming up soon. Um, and it should be a good week with a few things coming through. Oracle reporting uh, and a few different names this week. So we're excited. All right, uh, let's talk about a couple of things here. There's um, Tesla back to the upside this morning. We'll, uh, we'll get into the EV group a little bit here entirely, but uh, Berlin back up and running. Sean and I were touching on this a little bit on the podcast on the weekend. Um, but holding on to this uh, 175 this morning, half a percent uh, back to the upside. Uh, they were saying initially it could be two, three weeks. Yeah of downtime, uh, it turns out it's only a week, so a little bit better on that sense, but they are gonna miss out here. Yeah, it was supposed to be March 15th, Brendo, but they're gonna get power as early as today, according to some reports you'll recall uh, last week that there was activist, um, uh, there was an activist sabotage near the, uh, the power station at the uh, Tesla Giga a Berlin factory there. Uh, some activists were hiding out in the forest and basically cut off production. That's the second time the production has been interrupted um, for that particular plant in so many months. Uh, initially, we had uh, supply chain issues that couldn't, uh, that could, supply chain stuff that couldn't make its way through the Red Sea because of the uh, the Houthi attacks in, uh, in that particular era, Brendo. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on Tesla today. Again, Rivian, uh, some positive moves this morning from analysts. I want to mention this as well. Costco, uh, we got last week 1% downside or 1.14%. There's actually a couple of price target increases on Costco here, but uh, another gap uh, lower for COST. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, what was interesting about, well, you guys started with Tesla there. So uh, the note I was going to make about Tesla was how sideways it went at the end of the day more than anything. So Tesla, it's up, but look at the tight range this was in for pretty much all of all of the day on, on Friday, because once it bottomed out at about, about 11 o'clock or so, you had this little 175 to 177 range, it just held. Good sign for Tesla in that that's kind of a higher low, but the way I see it, like the trend has been pretty clean to the downside for Tesla, and even with the positive news that looks like, you know, power back, it's a factory, you don't know when they're going to resume, but it's a good sign if they get production going back, back again out of that uh, German fac the, the factory in Germany. That's certainly positive news. But it also looks like a rejection of the 180 and a continuation of the downtrend. So good, good news that you held 175, but you, know, you still have a, that rejection of the 180, which is a turnaround candle. That's what happened on Friday. And if we're going to go the same direction and just stick with the trend, that would mean 180 to me is a resistance spot that I'd be willing to fade. And if it breaks down through 175, it did break a couple of times on Friday and kind of held on to it. If it breaks down from there, you've still got room. So I'm still thinking short on Tesla. I'll be a little bit patient with it. There's a lot of chip names that are setting up that direction as well. But yeah, I don't, just because they got the power back, I know that's good news and you want to get that production back up. But... I don't know, I'm not really thinking bullish on Tesla yet. The trend is your friend. Yeah, I've, um, I'm just running this, you know, right now. We'll, we'll talk on another thing that we talked about on the weekend. And thanks again. I think we had more viewers again there uh, this weekend. So the podcast doing well. Thanks you for everybody. 1250 for Rivian. Look, if it just keeps on dipping in here, we did have a nice run up um, into that announcement we've talked about that huge move nice move there on friday but then it really got faded like off this 1350 and then we stopped at 1250 kind of made that move up now i'm feeling like and i wrote this down on the sticky note i'm not overly confident about this but this could be something down into here so if rivian get to 1250 it's going to get to 1250 immediately so that's you're gonna have to wait for it but i like rivian down here I, I you know i like the new models i think the talk is good uh about rivian nio they're off five bucks we got some good china data um over the weekend this could be something as well so that's something down here in and around five bucks so there's a few longs that i like in and around this space tesla neil just went over some levels i mean that 175 held 172 ish i i you know 
It's up against, a, it's, uh, you know what, Tesla's up against a bad market here today. So that's, that's something. I don't actually, like, I don't mind this 175 long. It's just you're stepping in front of something that can really hit. Like, right off the open, this name has, has a tendency, you know, to make some serious moves. Like, we were at 179 all the way up to 183, and then the market opened up, and you went from that 183 pretty much down to 178 in 15 minutes or so. So you got to watch out for Tesla off the open. But I think, I think the long is right in these, in these EV names until they break key levels. So 174 for Tesla and then basically Rivian down here at 1250. So we'll, we'll stay in those names. iBit's not doing too much. The only name I have. Bitcoin right now. I always have Bitcoin down here. 71.9. So bouncing around a little bit. If we have Michael Noss coming on, which I see that we do. Uh, MSTR. Let me just check what's going on right here. Because this is a name that he and I have talked about. Wow. 1600. Oh my. Mr. Noss, what's up with this? This name is off right now to the upside. And I remember when me and Michael were talking, he was thinking about crypto maybe sort of leveling off a little bit. That changed. And then within a, with the very next day, I was talking with Michael. He's like, nope, we got to look at MSTR now as sort of a levered play against Bitcoin. And look at this, man. Wow, nice move up. So uh, glad that Michael put us on this one because uh, big, big move up here for micro strategy. M Michael Saylor, man. That guy's sailing away with something right now. Hey, they, bought e they bought even more. Did they buy they more? Bought, they bought even more. I, I forgot the... Ooh. What's up with that? Why, why, why are these coming through today? What? Did you win the lottery or something there, Randy? The lottery? Right. Holla at your I like boy. that yes. one. Yes. There's birthday cake. There's chocolate. There's... Tim, see, people... Timbits. They're uh, like... Like they're donut holes. Donut holes. But they're Timbits. The All right. Americans call them donut holes, Ram Ram. Let... let Let's go back to the desk, and, and then when we hear Michael Noss, he'll know all about Tibbetts. Yeah. Yeah, just be aware, guys. Michael Saylor's still on CNBC right now as well. Um, you mentioned this morning before we came on, doing a victory lap today of, of sort, as he should. Yeah, crazy trade for uh, MSTR. Uh, just quickly, before we get to uh, Michael Noss, Boeing downside here on volume uh, through 195, uh, if you're just sitting down or, or opening your computer. Uh, DOJ uh, launching a criminal probe into this Alaska flight that shed a door on uh, the way to landing. Yeah, this is a criminal investigation. This is not a joke anymore. This is not about fines uh, or anything else. Uh, they're actually interviewing pilots. They're interviewing the passengers who were on the flight saying that they're actually possibly victims in a criminal offense. Uh, we'll have to see what happens here, but you'll recall back in 2021, Boeing paid about two and a half billion dollars uh, for after two deadly plane crashes, uh, which resulted in two 737 MAX crashing Brendo. So uh, yet another issue here for Boeing. Yeah, more downside. Um, I was just, no Michael Saylor should smile once in a while. He doesn't smile. What's He's, up with he that? He doesn't seem very happy. You're on all, all times highs. Buddy. He should be happy. Uh, if there's going to be a time when he's happy, it should be now. Um, as mentioned, let's bring in uh, Mr. Noss, uh, CMT over at Trade Ideas to uh, get a look at uh, how things are setting up so far this week. I mean, this guy, he's, he's brilliant, but he never smiles, Michael. He's, I always like to say with Michael Saylor, he's crazy, he's right. So you can be both crazy and right, but yeah, he's crazy. But you'd think, you know, he got so much, slammed so much every time Bitcoin's on lows, and he's been right the whole time. So yeah, I, you wouldn't be able to wipe the smile off my face at all. Um, but today, I want to talk about the elephant in the room, which is NVIDIA and the action that happened on Friday, and how that could affect the overall market. So everyone in the world is watching this particular stock when it comes to NVIDIA, and we had this massive gap up and then reversal today. This was pretty deadly for the chips as a whole. And I know a lot of people are out there now saying, okay, that's going to be the top of the market. And then we're going to have to push lower. But I'm actually going to talk a little bit about what is the market. And then what is it that we're going to see if that, that was a topping pattern. Because to me, that kind of looks like it could be at least a short-term top for the next week or so on NVIDIA. And then maybe the chips. So if we go in the next chart here, that's just the semiconductor index showing that that's going to follow quite Obviously, it's going to follow NVIDIA and the other chips are going to follow that as well. And the next chart is just the S&P 500 on the weekly chart. And I wanted to show that that is a doji candle that we had last week, if you look at the prior candle. And 
Quite often, dojis in candlestick analysis, they mean indecision. A doji is simply when you have the open equal to the close, and then you have this massive top and you got this massive bottom, but they ended up closing right where they open. That generally signifies indecision and can sometimes signify short-term tops of markets and then slight reversals. So the next thing that I saw, the next picture I have here, is what really scared me when I was looking through this Barron's cover. And for those who've been following like the time, I've talked about this before, it's actually something we teach about in the CMT that Barron's, The Economist, The New Yorker, quite often when they come out with really bold headlines like this, it just says bet on the bull with you know bullhorns ripping through the page, that can also mark short or long-term tops. So there's a lot of things out there that's saying, hey, maybe the SPY is in for a downturn. But I want to talk about how that might not actually be a bad thing for us traders. So the next uh, chart that I have here is essentially just the top holdings in uh, the S&P 500. And you can see NVIDIA's number three, which taking up almost 5.5% of the entire S&P 500 is NVIDIA. So if NVIDIA does end up selling and pushing lower and brings a lot of these names with it, then yes, we could see the SPY and the S&P 500 sell. And that would suck if that's all we were trading. You notice we got Microsoft, we got Apple, we got NVIDIA. These are all big tech names. So if there is going to be some sort of tech sell-off, that could be bad for these overall indexes. But I think there's still places that we can go to and there's still places that we can hide. So the next chart I have here is the RSP. So the RSP is the equal weight S&P 500. So this is no longer weighted to these those giant names that I just showed you. Every single stock in this index has an equal weight. So there's you know, 500 divided by um, it's 0.25 or 0.125, I can't remember. So it doesn't matter if you're the biggest company in the world or if you're the smallest to still make it in the S&P 500, it's equally weighted on here. And you notice if you look at last week's candle where there was this doji action in the S&P 500, there was still bullish action in the equal weight, right. meaning that even if the SPY is going to take a tumble here, there's a lot of strength of a lot of other securities under the hood. So one sector that I talked about this a few weeks so ago that I want to give as an example on the next chart is XBI. Uh, we were interested in XBI and biotechs when it was breaking out of that blue line that I drew there. I remember I brought it to you guys exactly on that day. It had a gap up and a run the next day, which is fantastic. But ever since then, it's been consolidating sideways. So if we're getting a push down now in tech or the big tech and the semis and the AI story, that money that's flowing out of there. I think is going to flow into other places. And I've been talking about this for a while. So if it's going to flow into other places, I want to make sure that I am spending my time and energy making sure that I am looking for where it's flowing into and, and hunting for that area. So biotech is going to be one of them. And funny enough, the last chart I have here is our trade ideas trade of the week, which is not made by me at all. So that's LFST. And this is made by Steve Gomez, who is a trader at Trade Ideas, just like myself, not a CMT. He doesn't do all of this nerd stuff that I just talked about for a few minutes. He looks at these individual names and he just goes by a name by name basis. And he found this LFST pulling into a gap fill after earnings and pulling into an anchored VWAP around 750 or so is where he's interested. This one has a 30% short float, which I know him and I know that's why he's interested, but it's a biotech and it's in the biotech life health services group. So just the, I guess the point of this and to wrap this up is the point is that yes, the market may sell off a bit and that might be pulled down by a lot of semiconductors and big tech names but i don't think for people like us who are okay scanning under the hood that that's necessarily going to be the top of everything i think we're just going to need to be a little bit more selective where we go you just can't buy nvidia and have it go up every day anymore uh but then it does and everyone gets very confused so i i mean i think the point yeah. here the bigger picture is is not to you know, jump ahead and not to assume that, you know, just because Friday happened, we just go straight back down, could be up 3% today. Who knows? You know, we'll have yeah. to see um, how things play out. But uh, the great point in this, 
have a plan. Always have a plan in, in how you're going to approach things as they come. Great stuff. Michael Moss, CMT over at Trade Ideas. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Thanks as always, Michael. Appreciate you there. And the, sure, things can't go up forever, can they? Can't they? Why not? I mean, this is sort of the thing. In a long, in a long enough time frame, sure, that's, that's absolutely fine. Everyone talks about like buy and hold, and you know, time in the market, don't time the market, and that's what it's all about. But as a trader, as a short-term trader, like you do have to go from looking one place to another for some of that momentum. And if it is coming out of the chips, like what sectors are going to be strong, like what things that have lagged might start to pick up a little bit, or what things um, can you just sort of lean into while we're correcting now. As a day trader, I just, just kind of believe, well, if things like NVIDIA and the chips are turning around, sometimes you just want to short those because that's easier for us to do. If the momentum is going to be good uh, on a lot of those names, we'll just sort of stick to it uh, over there. And uh, shout out to everyone in the chat that absolutely loves uh, what Michael brings to the table there. Just wanted to quickly point out a little something, something, just something on NVIDIA. Speaking of, oh, I got some of these bad wicks, but... It's about, if you go to Friday's bottom, it's like 865, you can sort of see there's Friday's bottom. Uh, some dark pool wicks just coming through there, but you can start to see you're actually catching a bit off of Friday's lows on NVIDIA. So down 1%, but that's starting to form an interesting level at the 865. It's been up and down, back and forth around that level a couple of times here today. Uh, it's pre-market already, but this 865 is starting to line up as a good one. And my goodness, Boeing... I sat down and threw an order out there. I thought we had a chance at the 197. We'll talk about this one on the rundown, but Boeing now down 2.5% and continuing to slide. They just cannot get out of their own way, uh, unfortunately. That stock, every time it looks like it's going to be strong, it was holding great support, and now you're broken under that support. So I think this is a short back in the 197. It's just a matter of getting a pop at some point to be able to fade into yeah, I'm looking, I'm, I'm doing the same thing here, trying to wait for pop. So I just, the sticky note is now out. You guys can go find it. We did talk about uh, fading the pop here on AMD. So one of the, I, one, I mean, I have Alibaba as a long, but I'm not so convinced about a long, but this is a nice little pop right there. But AMD, I wrote down 208.50. I mean, the market's coming in right now. I just put an offer right now at 205 where VWAP is to see if we can get a pop in for AMD and then fade it out. But uh, sticky note now out with a couple of different ideas on there today. So we're excited again. And thank you, Michael Noss, uh, for coming out. He'll be on with me tonight, I believe, on the market recap show. So get ready for that. A couple of earnings plays tonight as well. And then I just wanted to see what Rivian was doing right there because... We talked about this name. Yeah, nothing happening. Okay. I uh, wanted to see if this was moving around. Thought maybe that it was. But uh, all right. It's 852. Nice little move up here in the market, but not really. It's only up a little bit. Nine handles as we wait. I feel like we're going to wind up testing. We'll talk about the futures in a couple minutes, but I feel like this 18,000 down here on the NASDAQ is something to be looking out for. And if you are on the P Pro 8 platform and trading here at Real Trading, make sure that you switch over your contract. So even you guys. Up there, there you go, Sharif. Yeah, Sharif just goes, oh crap. Uh, M M, so it goes H M U S or Z uh, right there. So we're gonna have to watch out for M contract now. So, uh, yep, yeah, that flips over there in March. So if you are trading with us and you need to roll over, new contract today. So that always gets us. So Neil and I reminded each other, and uh, now we remind everybody out there. Most, most platforms it's, will have a continued contract. Yeah, and, and the thing is, it's not a huge deal. Today, it's not as big of a deal. The volume's still there on the back contract, but you'll really begin to notice it by the end of the day and by tomorrow when uh, the back contract is not doing a heck of a lot of volume at all. Just check the volume. Yeah, that's, that's, the biggest hint is going to be volume. It is, it is a big week because that means at the end of the week, we actually have quarterly, quarterly rebalancing. That's the other sign. So whenever you switch to contracts, yeah, you know you get quarterly that's rebalancing uh, coming up next. Over with a day. Netflix, you're getting a $725 price target here from Oppenheimer after an upgrade. Tells the advisory group upgrading both Dollar General and Dick Sporting Goods, neither of them reacting too much. We also have uh, Procter & Gamble here, P&G getting an upgrade from Truist here. La uh, on terms of the downgrades, we have American Electric Power getting a downgrade from UBS. Dominion Energy getting downgraded by BMO Capital Markets. 
Hyatt getting a price target increase, but a downgrade here for Morgan Stanley. And last but not least, Chegg getting downgraded by JP Morgan Chase, guys. Last yeah. but not least, Chegg not there. Yeah, Zim Zim Sporting Goods reports this week. It was down to 101, now it's up to 180. That what name a great is, chart, man. is absolutely huge. I know some of these retail names have just gone, gone haywire. You know what's going haywire right now? And we'll, we'll talk about some of those upgrades and downgrades, but look, look what's going on. The last seven days, Ethereum up 15%, now breaking through 4,000. Bitcoin now 71.9. Solana, some of, because I'm, I didn't sell any, but I, they're unstaked now, so well, they're, they're loose. We'll see if we can get rid of some of these. Uh, Cardano, so anyway, it doesn't matter. As we go, just the Bitcoin uh, market cap starting to get huge. We talked about this last week, it was 2.3 trillion. 2.83 trillion right now, uh, the total market cap there for the crypto universe. It's probably a little different than that, but it changes quite often right there. Uh, but yeah, DKS is, is, is on fire. What was another name that they had? She had on there. Dollar General. Yeah, DG. And well, yeah. Netflix was on there too. Netflix. Yeah, I mean the dollar stores have been some have been performing well, some not so much. But Dollar General, again, I mean some of these names that just continue to run up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I, I'm not convinced about retail. We've talked about this a little bit. Oh, KSS, isn't that Kohl's? They report this week as well. Kohl's. I didn't realize Kohl's and Sephora have something. But they do. So KSS bouncing around here on report coming out. This could be an interesting name. There's always some sort of buyout to chatter, takeover chatter here with KSS. Eh, again, another name that's not really moving too well uh, into earnings. But, you know, these other names, Walmart. I really like Walmart above 60 bucks here. See if it can hold that. I'm just not in the bullish camp right now. I do actually, you know, sitting there listening to Michael Noss. And if some of these bigger names start to falter, the market will come down and all these names will come down with it. Just a matter of, you know, picking the right ones. And then, as Michael mentioned, finding strength in certain names that you like. So I feel like Walmart would be a name that I'd like, just not at these levels. Like another name that I like, if, if it does come in, we've talked about Uber a little bit. I think this into seven, I mean, just a couple more bucks. Like, I, I mean, 70 would be great. You know, eight, eight bucks off that. Take a seven, eight percent haircut on that one. Disney's already coming in. We've been selling some Disney, which has been good. Um, and then the name that Brendan started the show with, sort of a little bit, was Costco, down another one percent. This is getting into that seven hundred dollar area that I think is is something as well. So, a couple good value things coming up there. My eleven year old spends money on Alta. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. That's a great co Alta. Eleven. Beauty. That's about yeah. So here's. That's a good company, man. They, they're a rocket ship, too. But how does anyone... Well, I mean, I guess I know how people buy stock, but you look at the exporting goods, really, from October lows at 100 to 180. I guess it's not a &F in terms of the chart, but, like, really, up here? And then you look over, it's like it's 4P is, like, 14 only. Price of sales is, like, 1, 1 1.1. So it's actually not that... It's not like it's ridiculously expensive, but going into an earnings print when stocks have done that, it just feels like it's getting a little frothy up there. Like, why does every retail stock... Only the better ones all look exactly the same up and to the right, but it's not parabolic or anything out of control. They report on Thursday, so I think we'll be. This is usually a good percentage mover. I think it's a little more interesting later on in the week after you get the earnings there. But too many high flyers. I shouldn't say too many, but a lot of high flyers in that space that I feel like you're going to get some uh, some dips. And I'd love to get. I own Walmart, but I'd love to get some more of that. It's actually. The stock is coming back down that I'm the most interested, I said on Friday, is Costco. Is that finally starts to come back in a little bit, I'll be looking to buy into that dip. All right, let's get into everything else you need to know here as we get going at uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll kick things off with a look at the overall market here. Sharif will uh, have a look at the futures. We're going to look at the S. Today, guys, this is the actual index for the S&P. Here we are, 51.24 currently trading right now. Uh, we got as high as 51.86 last week. So let's go ahead and say, for today's purposes, we're looking at a resistance level of that 50-point area, so 51.50 to the north side. That takes us up to the overnight high, as well as the high on the 4th. To the downside, we're looking at support at 5,100, Brendo. Yeah, we'll see if the uh, pullback continues here for the overall market. Meanwhile, if you haven't done so, grab that. Uh, TraderTV.live, you can enter your email address, and that's all you need. Then it just shows up every single day. We do your homework for you uh, every morning. Um, we, we didn't mention it, but uh, did you see Oppenheimer? Well, I saw the tail end. They won everything. Yeah. So the best actor, Everything's best picture. I think it was seven Oscars. It was ridiculous. It was crazy. Yeah.
Um, but yeah, I, I haven't actually seen the movie, have you? Neither have I. Neil's the only one that's seen yeah, it from I, like, the crew yeah, here. Have to yeah. have to watch it, but <laughs> yeah, shout out to Oppenheimer. Absolutely crushing the Oscars last oh, yeah. night. Um, here is Coinbase. We'll talk about crypto to kick things off, because absolutely. 72,000 comes and goes there briefly for uh, BTC. Here's Coin, as we said, all the way back to 272 here this morning up. Tough to see, but six and a quarter percent for Coinbase. This, this really irked me this morning, Brendo. Not like I really needed a lot of irking uh, because I um, you know, didn't sleep as much. But here's the thing, guys. Uh, the Financial Conduct Authority, that's the regulatory body in England, they weren't not allowing retail investors to buy these exchange-traded notes that were specifically linked to Bitcoin. They said they're too risky and they're, uh, you know, they need more um, sophisticated investors to be in investing in these things. They changed their mind overnight and uh, sent Bitcoin coin up through 71,000, Brendo. That's the reason here uh, from the English regulator. Yeah, never mind um, 6%. Here's MicroStrategy, as we were saying, 9% to the upside. If you missed it, uh, Michael Saylor on CNBC earlier, um, he has wrapped up and uh, moved along on his day. But yeah, huge, huge move here, guys, for MSTR. Huge move all over the place. If you look at the like a weekly chart on BTC, really tells some of the story here on Bitcoin. Because you had like a brief pause at 52,000 and then it's been just all strong weeks since going into the break. Uh, the break in the new fresh all time high up here. So if you look at like generally speaking, when was the last time you had a run like this? That was going into the 40,000 level. Like you basically you broke out at 20,000, it doubled up, got to 40,000 and then there was a pullback to 30. So if we're on that type of a move, dip into 40,000, that double up would take you to 80, and if there was a pullback, I think you know, it would be probably back into the, like the 60 level or something like that, if it were to just simply follow the pattern. But that's, uh, sometimes that's what happens, let's be real. Uh, that can easily happen, and if we get to 80,000, I think that's like a natural spot, technically, for this move to abate. And I'm talking about a weekly chart there, so the, just the general trend. But if you're looking at individual names, it was a huge ramp up in a lot of things. Worth noting, Coin was weird in that Bitcoin got back up to the highs, or at least close enough to the tops, and Coin just sort of sat there with a seller underneath 260 all Friday afternoon. Now you're gapping back above 270, which is a huge level on the weekly for Coinbase. Uh, just come to the chart this way. I'll pull it up in my trade ideas so that you can see all the way back. You go to the 270 level, that's a monster level from December of 2021, actually was the lower high that led you into the bottoms on Coin. So holding a 270 would be pretty big. If you hold on to 72,000 and you break two, and hold 270, I think this stock is going for the moon. If we break down from 72, I think that gap takes you back into the 260. I like the afternoon resistance on Friday that it hung around at all afternoon. I want to see if that can hold on any kind of a dip. Like the 260 level would seem like an obvious place if this does fill the gap to start looking for a long. All right, yeah, we talked about uh, this, and, and thanks for all the kind words there. If everybody gets a chance to go over and check out uh, the podcast this weekend, uh, Brendo and I, a couple fun things. We talked about crypto. We talked about MSTR and whatnot. Go, go, go check it out. Pretty cool. I was telling the guys uh, this weekend, it was pretty cool. You just click on this one link there, and you get all of the, I mean, I think it's probably on more than this, but, you, you know, the big three right there. Uh, you just click on it and go over. Have a oh, the good news. Look. I need to point Here's this out. Podcasts. Um, it's actually a better, like, that link is a fantastic way to do it. And even more important, because Spotify had an issue. So if, you, they, yeah. Yeah, so if you went to Spotify, like say you're subscribed, I'm subscribed. So I just go open Spotify right. uh, to check it out. And it wasn't listed there. So you couldn't actually on there from, from the app, I couldn't get to it from the app. But if you had that link, it takes you to a direct right. page where you, where you can get the podcast. So Makes that link actually that. is a heck of a lot better. And then look, and nothing against Spotify. This, was, this is the only time that it happened. It was the only time that I didn't get it. Because I, I, I noticed cause I didn't get the notification. Um, and therefore, I had to go search for it myself. So that's a fantastic link, which makes sure that you get it even if someone has issues. Yeah, that QR code uh, at the bottom puts it all the way uh, over there as well. Um, look, so I'm, I'm just going to sit in IBIT for a minute. Bitcoin is failing off 72,000. So, you know, we, we took the shot there thinking that, hey, if we can hold this, see when volume comes into IBIT, see if this, if this, this does anything into the open here. So I, I'm, I'm going to hold this down to like $40.50. Like we're not in very many shares. I do want to buy a little bit more down here at 41 
uh, dollars as well. But I mean, to look at this and try to predict where the ETF is going to open, I don't really know. Up 4%, Bitcoin, you know, if it goes, people are going to pile in. So let's just wait to see. I'm going to give it down to the 200 period here. Um, and then, you know, if we can see what crypto's really been doing uh, on itself here, if we just go over to a quick little one minute chart here. You see, so we're trying to bounce around. This is a decent little level. As you can see, what is that, 71? So I, just so I can see mentally what we need to really have break before we're in trouble. It's probably 71,000. You know, we've been holding upside here for about five hours or so above 71,000. Try to get above 72 just now, 72.5. So let's just wait to see if we break. 72.250, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. So I would say that we should really get worried if you have a lot right now in anything, I mean, maybe 71.2, but ultimately 71,000, I think, is a bail spot. So let's wait to see what happens. We'll watch down here, 71,000, but that's what Bitcoin's doing. We're in iBit right now, and I'm going to average it in uh, down here near 41. So we'll probably get long pretty soon here. All right, great talk from Michael Noss earlier on the next one here. NVIDIA, if you missed it, uh, scroll back a little bit. And uh, he had some uh, great ideas and uh, great thinking on what to do with NVIDIA this week and what happens if this sell-off continues. Huge, ugly red candle here on the daily chart after that huge move up over the past um, couple of weeks, months even. Uh, that being said, there's a number of positive analyst moves today there are. in NVIDIA. Shocking. Cantor Fitzgerald, chief among them, Brendo, with a price target increase from 900 to 1200 basically upgrading this in anticipation of the event we're going to have for four days next week. From Monday to Thursday, there's going to be the NVIDIA AI GTC conference. That should present us with multiple opportunities for catalyst, midday, intraday, whatever you, uh, whatever you want to call it. So we'll see what NVIDIA does in anticipation of that event, Brendo. Uh, trying to hold on to the bottom end of Friday's range here, guys for NVIDIA. Trying. That's the key. The 865, man. It just seems like it's a, it's a bit of something. But you know what? Like any time a stock falls like that, the bottom is going to automatically be some kind of a level. Like if that's where when you drop $100 and have the biggest, it was like the first time in seven years that it had been up 5% and closed down 5% within the same day uh, for NVIDIA. So when you have that kind of a drop, Wherever you find support is going to be a biggie at that 865. I would have, when I sat down, I kind of felt we were trading at 880 or so, and I was thinking back in a 900 made sense, and I wanted to be short back in a 900. Now you're at the 860s, it makes it very tricky to look for a fade. You're looking at $30 to the upside before I'd be getting into that fade. The other ones that I put on the mix today was, was AMD because AMD broke support. So AMD had a double close Monday and Tuesday at 2.05. So there's your close once, there's your close twice. Then support for the next three days, which tested on Friday and then broke this morning. So this, to me, off the 05, if it, even if it breaks that, it gets back to like a 10, 11 level. I think that's going to give you some opportunities uh, for some shortable levels on AMD. It doesn't mean that I won't trade NVIDIA. It's just it's a little far away from the price that I wanted to engage. And we already mentioned ARM. I mean, with the IPO lockup uh, tomorrow, this is... Oh, wait a minute. I just realized ARM is at the bottom there. Let's not skip too far ahead, but, you know, I've been shorting ARM pretty much every single day. But, yeah, I like the AMD because we get that 205 level as opposed to NVIDIA. Yeah, so we have AMD written down here as a second idea to short. I'm, I'm already sitting at 205, but 208.50 for me, Friday's close is something that we're going to look at. We also have ARM on there, too, as a 130 short. We'll look at that. Um, but, yeah, already sitting on AMD to try to get short at VWAP. So then if we can break up into where we closed on Friday, 208.50, I just want to see this name go green before I go long. So uh, right now, no, it'll be a short on these chip names for sure. NVIDIA, um, you know, traded it fine on Friday. It was just, we had two trades that was, one was a $2 slippage and then the other one was three. Just meaning that like, if you want to get out at 870, you're really getting 867. So that wasn't great. So, but you can also get $3 moves to the upside too. Like, you know, how fast this thing can move. So just put your bids and offers, get them pending if you're scalping like the way I do and the way we do. So, you know, you could buy an 870 and then the next thing you know, one minute later, it's at 878. So you got to get your offers ready. You got to get your stops ready. Just, just be ready for Nvidia. I'd rather not trade this name, just very, very violent. But if it does get up to key levels, 
like 900 again, then I feel like it's an absolute no-brainer. And then, you know, we've always been shorting Intel, but I wonder if that, that can change. Just on a little bit of weakness here in the market, Intel's following the market, not down, AMD's down 2%, NVIDIA's down almost, what was it, just, just about 1% there. And Intel's holding out okay. Intel has a good bottom here at like 42, but we're not gonna get to that today. So let's just, let's just watch all these names. We were shorting Micron. I mean, we won't be trading Broadcom. It's too big of a spread. Micron's a great short up at 97. If we can get there, 97, 97.50 against that top. I kind of like that one as well. But some of these names just have to travel around. Look, it's Monday. We've got um, market down half a percent and all eyes on the chip names. So I feel that best names to sort of wait, wait around. We got some key levels on AMD. Plus AMD is also heading to 200. So that's the other thing. It's, it's just another one of those huge levels that if it's really tanking down, you could probably smash 200 short. But remember that story that I just said, you're probably gonna get like 200, 200 or something like that if it breaks, or sorry, uh, the other way around, Two not, 198.50 or so, you could lose a dollar or so on a break of 200, so watch out for that. But I'm gonna be short AMD today, just a matter of where, and the first spot would hopefully be VWAP up here at 205. Uh, just seeing a few people mentioning this, UMAC as well, unusual machines. Uh, looks like they're in the drone space. Three and a quarter million shares on the float on this one. Um, this was a recent IPO, it would uh, appear anyways, but a uh, huge gap up. We're way up here this morning. So a huge gap up above that high from day one on uh, UMAC, again, about three million shares for that one. Uh, a couple things to note here for Chinese ADRs, a huge move down for most of these. This is a PDD, but uh, daily chart looks terrible. 115.50 this morning. So all of these gapping back higher, maybe a bit of a bounce underway here, but uh, there is some negativity. Goldman Sachs, uh, one of those on PDD today. Yeah, what a sell-off. This had a fantastic 2023. Go back and have a look at that chart. But yeah, overnight, a slew of economic data coming out of China. We had CPI grow by 0.7%. PPI was a little higher than expected at 27 And you also had the ending of the Chinese... Uh, annual parliamentary meeting, which uh, a lot of uh, discussion there was on economic topics and how to spur that 5% growth that they uh, target for, Brendo. So we'll see how these ADRs do on the day. Yeah, Baba, meanwhile, same story, 1.4%. Couple days in a row, actually, back higher for Alibaba. Yeah, I have, yeah, I mean, I, I have Alibaba written down on the sticky note as, actually, I'm not gonna show it again, but it's, it's on there. It's the number one trade idea for me today. I, you know, with those good numbers there in China, I feel pretty, you know, we've liked Alibaba. I, I bought it down there at 72 and change. I think it was low 72, so it's been good. We didn't sell it when it got to 80 there on earnings. They have a buyback that they've instituted. They're putting more work into the cloud. I really like the name. If all these retail names in the United States are starting to go upside, so should Alibaba at some point. So it's just a matter of China getting itself figured out. We've talked about this numerous times, both on the podcast, on the Market Recap Show, on this show. And I don't know, it's, it's just a good trading vehicle. Once it opens up, I, I like Alibaba. That's, you know, the 50 period is that 73.50. So we'll just see if it can hold. So that's what I'm looking for. Dip buy opportunities early into Friday's close of 73.50. So that's all that I wrote down here, 73.50 as a trade idea there for Alibaba. But I would be much more aggressive than this. It's just the market could open up and this could flush a little bit. So I want to wait for that 73.50 to come in. Let me just check to see if there's any imbalances on this at all. Um, and you can pick, there's many, there's PDD, there's Neo, there's Baidu, there's Billy Billy. There's so many different names that we can talk to, to this story. Just, I always trade Alibaba. So it's not on here. Normally it is. So that's surprising. I thought I was going to open up the imbalance it's locator good. and see it, but it's not. Uh, but yeah, Alibaba up one and a quarter percent today, one and a half percent. I like it. I think it, I think it makes sense here to be buying this dip. It's above the 50 period moving average. And if you want to talk about rotating out of what's been really hot into what's not, well, Chinese names have been what's not. So let's wait to see if it can get, get a little bit of a bump here. I turned the bull over into a bear on this side. So I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling bearish today. What's weird is to start, but it's, I swear that was, a, they were, um, they were I both I thought I moved that on. Friday. Oh, they were uh, I mean, yeah, because I mean, on Friday, I know I, I was like half and half. Like I had short ideas and long ideas on Friday. I didn't really have uh, too much of a direction. But like today, it's very like yesterday. I don't know. Usually, if we have a day like Friday, I'm changing that in the afternoon because I always say if it's if we have a, an extreme day, I always move it. But I don't have a. Diff I, I have the same level 
on my iPad. I have 73.5 on Alibaba as the thing to watch. But Pinduo Duo was Brennan mentioned. I mean, PDD got shellacked on Friday. I, like, this was probably the biggest move that wasn't talked about to the downside on Friday, I want to say, was this dropping seven bucks down into 110. And it's just gapping on this positive news and getting back to where it was on Friday. So I don't wonder if this can't get back above 118, if it's not, this might be a shorting opportunity in Pinduoduo. Duo. Like if it goes up because the entire group is being pulled to the upside, does that not uh, run you right into the sell point at that 118? So I might have my eyeballs on this. We need a drop in Baba to get long, but I'll keep my eyes on PDD. If the others start going, just remember how weak this was on Friday. Because that was a bit of a missed opportunity. You more or less could have shorted that at any point in the first half of the day, and you would have made money on Pinduo Duo. Uh, just a reminder, guys. Uh, once again, we're back up and running on the uh, portrait stream. Check it out today. Uh, you can watch the show live, real time, on your phone or any device in portrait. Second stream is also back up and running, so go check that out. Um, let's talk uh, Tesla here. Just real quick, there was a note on uh, Airbnb. It didn't really do anything on this, but uh, back downside a little bit this morning, 0.44%. They're going to ban the use of security cameras in listings um, right across the globe. So not sure how they'll enforce that, yeah. maybe, but uh, yeah, it didn't move on that anyways. But uh, just a heads up on uh, Airbnb. Um, yeah, let's talk about Tesla. Uh, Berlin looking like it's uh, good to go once again. Um, there was a couple of uh, negative notes I saw from analysts this morning on Tesla, but right back to the bottom here. Yeah, I was expected the outage was going to be till March 15th, Brendo. So we get uh, a bit of uh, an earlier um, reinstatement of power there. We'll have to see how they do. They've been behind on production. This has been the second outage for them in so many months because of the issue with the Red Sea and uh, the passing through the uh, Suez Canal. So uh, good luck here that they'll be able to get it sooner rather than later, but let's see how they do. Yeah, 175, kind of a line in the sand, really. Bottom of the range here, guys, once again for uh, Tesla. Yeah, Tesla. We did mention that the, it was a very tight range on Tesla for the entirety of the afternoon on Friday. I just, I think we're headed down to this channel at the bottom at 150. We've been saying this for a while that um, when everything was screaming higher and the market was strong, you saw what happened to most of the EV names, and Tesla was no different. Since that. you broke, since you broke that 180 again on Friday, you're back into our February bottom, which is the 175. If 175 holds, I think it's, it, I don't want to trade inside of this range. It's way too tight of a range for Tesla. If it breaks up, I'm thinking fade of the 180 level. Just has to get up to the 180. I would suppose you break Friday's lows, there's room to 170. I just don't know if I like that breakdown trade. I kind of prefer the chips today, but I don't want to get away from Tesla being along until it breaks a level up. Like if it breaks in, a, if it had held 180 on Friday, I would have been going long today because that would have made the bottom in front of 170, be putting in uh, the higher low, would have kind of broken, held a higher low, and then I think you'd have a bit of a trend turn. I just don't know that it set that up yet. So until it closes above 180, I'll look for short at that level. But that's 4 or $5 away. So I don't think that's a guarantee that we'll get a position on Tesla. Rivian, by the way, the $13 level on Rivian is set up it's not a double top per se because this was as high as like 1360 uh, on Monday, or sorry, on Friday, uh, late in the morning. But the 13 level in the afternoon was a very clean wall. And you got pretty much the same top there today. I think above 13, I'd be looking for uh, longs on Rivian. Otherwise, the dip could be all the way down to Thursday's close. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm just putting some bids out on Rivian right now. So I wrote on the sticky note that I liked Rivian. Again, another good idea down at 1250. So this was a, li a little level here. We held it on Friday. We talked about this. So I kind of like this level. Um, we, we went through it. Rivian's up on the day. What, what I'd written down, what I talked about was I'm, I'm bearish, right? And so we turned the bull to bear. We talked about some of the, the bearish ideas that we had there today with AMD and the chip names. That Those are really the where my focus is. We're going to get to ARM in a minute as well, so that's, that's another one. But if we can fall into this 1250, I think it's worth looking at it. So huge move up to 1375 and then a huge move down. So it's just like sometimes you look at these charts, you can almost turn them the other way and say they look better. So this could also be a good fade up here if we can get going as well. So 
being a bear today, I feel that this would be a great level to short, but I just don't think we get up there. I wonder if we dip into 1250 and then get back into 13. So I just like this little dip and then possible move back up to sort some of these pre-market levels. So let's see if Rivian and the market buys any weakness in Rivian. That's what I'd like to see. So I'm gonna be sitting there and trying to buy that. I wish, I see people talking about Apple down here. I bought Apple on Friday at 169 for, in, in the swing trade. It's up again here now today against the market. So I feel really confident now that Apple is a long. Oh. You know, so this could be another long idea down here at 171. So now that they've gotten rid of the, ooh, I like the, I like the clear cups there. Thank you, Randy. As we go, there, there's Randy. There he is. Yeah, they, the, I, I turned those guys both around there. All right, Why cheers. are you hiding? Like as if, like you're already on the camera. That's my animation. Where's the? Oh Randy yeah, what animation? happened to me? Anyways, because you got a red shirt. There it is. Similar. Ooh, twin. Is it the same? Sh yeah. Well, that, that's same. a nightmare there for your wife. Two Randys. All right. Well, we'll wouldn't, be a, you wouldn't want to clone Randy, yourself? Randy, Bitcoin's, no. 72,000, Randy, now, and still ripping up. Bitcoin down here. 72,000 down here, Randy. We were just looking at Apple. Apple, nice little bottom there. Uh, Randy always, we don't look at energy enough, but Randy's always asking us. XOM. What, whoa, 108, Randy. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this thing sub 100 down here into 98 bucks. What a move. Oh, wow, that took me by surprise right there. I didn't realize Exxon was this high. Good call on that one. And then also with Chevron. Uh, you know, again, we mentioned this a couple times about diversifying your portfolio. Grab some names where you can get some yield. Uh, and that was a good one, man. Chevron and XOM, big, big buybacks in place here. And then it continued to move higher. So did you grab any oil down there? I know you were looking at it. No. Yeah, we never, ever do. Well, remember the uh, CVX had that deal that basically they lost the deal because XOM had rights in the premium basin to the, to the company. And you know, XOM might make the deal. So, like, that's the hot spot. Uh, the other one that's creeping up, thank you, Uncle Warren, Oxy is now holding the 200 period above the $60 level. I mean, it's not like it's, it's not rocket science on the daily chart, and it's not giving you the monster return, but bouncing off 55, 56 in this stock, it just seems like uh, you can't, you haven't been able to lose doing it. Nope. All right, uh, might be more of a story tomorrow than today, but we'll touch on ARM here to wrap things up. Bit of a gap to the downside, lockup expiration coming through. Uh, much anticipated lockup expiration coming through for uh, ARM this week. That was a quick six months, Brendo. I don't feel like that six months really uh, went by that all that slowly. Quick six here, so we're looking for the expiration uh, lockup to end tomorrow. That's March 12th, the Tuesday. Uh, if you recall, less than 10% of ARM's float. Uh, the actual outstanding shares was actually made available here uh, for uh, on the secondary market. Uh, typically, lockup or expirations create uh, share price volatility, so we should get some good... Um, action tomorrow on ARM. Yeah, we'll uh, keep an eye on it today as well. Just a quick note on the um, uh, phone version of the show, guys. It's on YouTube Shorts. So YouTube Shorts now has a feature that allows you to go live. So it's, that's why it's different than the regular stream. Very cool, very cool. Uh, and of Arm. course, the dashboard now working as well. Uh, so that's back up. I mean, obviously we love that. So if you check out more Trader TV, uh, you can go over and look at the dashboard. It is going to have positions throughout the day, and then it's got some news in there. Hey, Mara, Bitcoin makes a new record high. Obviously, we talked about NVIDIA already. And PIK is today's biggest percentage mover. Uh, so your kid pick is your gapper extraordinaire. So check that out. It's up all day on uh, More Trader TV. Uh, obviously, if you're watching on Friday, Arm was a good short pretty much all day long. Whether or not SoftBank sells or starts selling tomorrow or a week a or after the IPO lockup tomorrow, who knows? But it does put some downward pressure on the stock, and it feels as if people were getting out in front of that. Because even when the market was ripping, even when you saw NVIDIA get to 970 and AMD break out in the morning, Arm was only breaking down. It was shorted like five times on Friday and was shorted on Thursday. And I, I want to do the same thing. So you got 131, you got support right in here that I think can turn into a resistance level. So that's first level, look short. And then the afternoon was a 135 short. So those are the two levels I like there on ARM. Always a chance it could straight up flat bottom break. There's a decent level at 126 as well. I'm only looking short today. If this thing just starts stair-stepping to the upside and 
only going higher and trending up, then, then hopefully that means I don't trade it because you don't want to be fighting trend. It would be interesting if all of a sudden tomorrow there wasn't any selling on ARM because you never know. I think there's a lot of expectation that some shares are going to start to get dumped, and if none happen, then remember it doesn't have an overly large float and people could get caught betting on the wrong side of this. It is a squeeze-ish name because of its float. That said, I'm still only, still only looking short until it proves otherwise. Yeah, we, we, we got ARM written down today as another trade idea, so they're all pretty much the same as what we have on the board there today. We're going to short at 130. I'm already sitting there. Watch out for 132. Here we go, man. We're starting to make a little bit of this early. Whoops, I don't have Stream Deck up, but we're trying to make a little bit of money here. Uh, as there it goes, man, Bitcoin, congratulations. Anybody on that trade, as it's starting to go back up to the upside, there it is, thank you, Fabian or Ramin. As it starts to go up to the upside, or Sharif, uh, there it is, nice move, up to 4150 right now for Bitcoin. Look, we talked about this, liking this name at 72,000. We gave some lower levels there in and around 71.2 or so. Let's see what happens when this starts to open up. MNMD right now, mine met a hot name from last Last week continues to go higher. I want to thank our guest we had on Friday, talked about the space as well. Um, here it comes, nice move to the upside, breaking through 10 bucks right now for mine med. So that was something that was maybe moving. Saw someone in the chat about that. All right, let's go back over to the desk and wrap this up. But yeah, arm lockup. Will it happen tomorrow? I don't know. Brendan, you think it, uh, it'll be a big sell event tomorrow? Or are we just getting ahead of this? The last time we had one of these, I forget what stock it was, the last time we had one of these, it ended up being an absolute nothing burger. So mm. I think it can go both ways. We'll see. Uh, worth noting for sure. Tomorrow, what's coming up on the midday? Volatility all week, Brendo. That's the topic. Today, specifically, we're looking at how to identify these volatile markets and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and then so on. We'll be talking about how to trade them. Volatility is an important, important factor in trading. Generally speaking, traders like it. But uh, there's a heck of a lot to learn. I just, that made me think immediately uh, that I haven't looked at M NYCB this morning. Okay, not really doing too much. Still has some support. It looks like down around that 325 uh, area. I just, I just saw on the imbalances that it was one of the few names that even had oh, some kind of an imbalance. Okay. Uh, right there, small buy imbalance. Fisker, Fisker leading the way on the imbalance is only 700,000. Remember, there's not much. You're not going to get the big New York, uh, NASDAQ names until about 928 or so. So I bit with a small it looks like early imbalance. It's not really that big. So not a lot. Rivian's got one, but that's only a couple of hundred thousand shares. I don't think it's a huge deal. There's a couple of names that we... Well, you mentioned Apple. We didn't actually have that on the rundown. I think two things were strong for most of Friday. Apple was strong all of Friday. Google was strong for most of Friday. And then eventually just kind of did what everybody else did, which was fall. The fact that it held exactly 135... I think is a, an interesting sign for Alphabet. Whoops, go to the 15 minute. 135 was previous resistance that turned into support on Friday. So like, I like the 135 on Alphabet. It's starting to get away from that level. But in terms of big cap tech names, these were the, I mean, Apple and Google were the only two that it kind of stood out for some strength. So I do like this 135 on Alphabet, if there's even a chance that we can get a dip into it. And uh, try to grab some longs. I mean, there wasn't a lot, a lot that was great for longs on Friday. This was good for at least half a day. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, another long that I wrote down was Amazon. So kind of in that same bucket as what oh, yeah, I talked about there with some tech strength, if at all possible. All right, so I, I want to watch AMD early. We just got to 204. Like, we were waiting at 205. So we were close uh, to getting an early short there on, on AMD as well. So this could still pop in. We'll watch out for 205. At the end of the day, you know, the level that we wrote down was 208.50, so that's Friday's close. Yes, I wrote down yesterday's close, but you know, Friday's close. So right there, 208.50. Feel like that's good, but any, any sort of a rip back to view up, we definitely want to short that one. Um, Amazon has been pretty strong. Like I said, I like the retail space, but not willing to, again, I'm bearish, not willing to stand in front, but this could be a 173 take. And then the other name that we're bearish on or bullish on is Alibaba and Apple. So those are some two names there. And then short names, obviously we like Arm. We've talked to... Uh, the arm's going down more now. We probably will miss this one. Um, a firm. And then maybe Disney hasn't been. We've got, we got out of some Disney there. Remember we were kind of like, oh, man, we got out at 112 and it went to 115 on some Iger news. Maybe it was 113, 112.80 or something. Uh, and then it went up to 115 and we were like, what the? But now we're starting to fade out a little bit. Look at Apple, man. Apple's starting to rip. 
already gone uh, up to 173 right now. So we'll probably have to get long some apple, uh, you know, in and around here somewhere. We are going to have the bell uh, being rung in just about 30 seconds to start off the day. So, you know, hit the like button now before the day gets behind you and you forget to do it. Hit the like, hit the subscribe as we're going to be live trading all day here. And then we have the class throughout the, you know, midday. It's going to be great again. Uh, I'll find out the topic, but it should be a fun one. Coin as well. There we go. It's Monday. What, what the? What happened? Just oh, push anyways, it again. In five, four, three, two, matter. one. Ring it. It's Ramin okay. decided to promote the How to Trade show. There. That's, it's, 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 all, it's all good. It's all good, man. It's all good, good. man. It's all good on that one. <laughs> Uh, okay, there we go. Nice little break back higher. Wow. Apple is really going. That's that's a great trade and there if you had the long on uh, that one. iBit's trying to go as Bitcoin goes. And bye-bye, as we said, man, there goes AMD. Um, it just hit 201. Uh, big wick down there to 201.50, my bad. Uh, and now back up to 202.50. So watch out for this. And then we're going to let AMD, or sorry, uh, NVIDIA, the other one, mm. settle down just a little bit. Because it just touched, you know, it just touched 860. Now it's at 875. $15 move right there in, in 30 seconds. $15 in 30 seconds there on uh, NVIDIA. I better watch out for AMD here. Wow. That's uh, what a ridiculous move. AMD's tank. Maybe 200 is going to immediately break. Boeing gave you no chance uh, for a pop to maybe be able to short into the 97 level. That's already headed down. Arm is already headed to the downside. If the market's starting to come down in, one of the things we... Google's going up. So like every stock that I liked short is already headed down and every stock I like long is not giving you a chance to get a good price. So AMD is absolutely flushing. Oh, watch out. Uh, Coinbase just made a big move. Yeah, we got a dollar already. There it is, man. We shorted, uh, we shorted AMD. So there it is right there, the early dollar club member. Uh, we'll only take out 10%. Let's see how low we can go, man. We're also waiting at 200 here for this name. Let's go. See you later. See ya later. That's $2 in the money right now going into the gates of hell. That's $3 in the money right now for AMD. We told you this was the short that we wanted, and there it is right now. It is a gong show for AMD as it just touched. How low did it get there? 198.50. We better bid there one more time. It is Tank City right now on advanced micro devices, and there it is. We did it again. Let's see if we can actually hold some of our money today. Uh, What's up, eh? Repeat runner Rail Vision trying to get a move again today, this morning. RVE, RVSN is the ticker for this one. Today, the catalyst is that they received an order from a Class 1 U.S. railroad company for their AI-based safety system. Also worth noting, they have about 2.65 million share float. 4.8% of that is going to be short, so keep an eye on RVSN, guys. Oh, man, $4 in the money right now on this AMD trade. We're going to go one for one, and then we're just going to let iBit just chill the hell out uh, as AMD is really coming in now. We wrote down we could see 195 today, by the way. So I'm going to put another bid down here at 197. As here it goes, man, the number one idea here uh, is Alibaba Long, but, oh, Alibaba Long is going to come in right now as well. But there goes AMD to the down. Oh, sorry, Alibaba's ripping. AMD just continues to get hit, man. Huge downside move. And by the way, look what's happening with NVIDIA as well. Arm want... broke 125. Oh, yeah, Arm broke 125, I guess so. Um, uh, NVIDIA right now is down $40 uh, right there. But, yeah, this is a monster trade for me here on AMD. But looks like it's trying to settle down just a little bit, coming back up. So let's just play this the way it is. But, wow, AMD with a huge move. NVIDIA with an even bigger one yeah this is nasty to the downside but i, I just noticed coinbase tank like seven dollars when bitcoin did literally nothing i'm in the arm on the first Look available part of oh uh pop i should say back into pre-market high so i'm going to give this to the pre-market top in there it broke that 125 as mentioned as everything's starting to come down but wow coinbase Starting to level off, but this just flushed. I said 260. If we held on to 70,000, 260 was a level I'd look for a dip buy on coin, and we're already there. Uh, I'm, I am short arm, but I don't see it on the position board, but I am short arm. Okay, well, maybe they have to reload that. Um, okay, so yeah, the only thing we're short right now is. AMD and it's four bucks. We're going to continue to watch it. We're still watching NVIDIA. I want to watch both of these names as wow, man. We are really doing quite, uh, quite some damage here today uh, on this, man. What's happening, Sharif, is $5 right now on the money on AMD. And 
Oh, thank you, Sharif. Uh, as there it goes right down to the downside for NVIDIA as well, into 850 right now for NVDA, as these names just continue uh, to make moves, that's for sure, upside and downside right now. Let's check out Meta. Meta was another big runner um, on Friday that we talked about just a little bit there. Um, and now Meta is also tanking, down 4%. Wow, as these big names go, man, they sure go. Uh, Meta with a big move to the downside. Apple probably holding fort as well. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, Apple's, Apple's, uh, Apple's, yeah, Apple's holding it up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Apple's, oh, Google's up too. Apple's holding fort right here at the highs. Oh, Google's up as well. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Oh, actually, Google. Um, all right, here we go. AMD is really starting to print. Google's back. AMD is really starting to print now to the downside. So uh, we just got again down to 198. So let's see if we can break through this. I am bidding right now on AMD 197.20. So here we go. Let's go. Uh, we have. We only have one trade on, this and iBit, but we're just going to continue to watch that. We've already missed out Alibaba. There we go. We want to talk about our number one position was going to be for the long. Alibaba absolutely ripped up there like crazy. The number one trade idea, you had to get it early, was Alibaba. What's up, Adara? Lock Inc. making a nice pop in volume here right at the beginning of the day. SQ, the ticker here, getting a price record increase from Jefferies from 90 to 100, basically saying that they believe that Square or Block Inc. is being a little bit conservative with their revenue estimates. They think there will be a little bit more upside to come for the revenue for this company. So SQ up almost 3%, guys. Block. Okay, that's going to be worth a watch. I am into Boeing as well. Boeing doesn't get to 97, but it just pulled into 96s there. Was able to oh, take that short. Be. Arm starting to break back to the upside, however, oh, with no. the market weak. So it's trying to take out the pre-market lows. I like the 31 level. We're not going to chance. We didn't get a chance, obviously, to short that. So I shorted it in front of that breakdown. If it gets above the pre-market lows, do not want to fight uh, that too much. Nvidia. We already talked about Nvidia a bit. It was Coinbase that was also flushing. It didn't get to 260 exactly, but that is close of a wick as you're going to get. And it just immediately shot right back up. So you had to be sitting on the bid to try to catch that one. I was not fast enough. I'll slap the fail on arm, which was the best short for me on Friday, but I'm not going to hold it past that intended uh, target. It breaks back above that pre-market low. I'll look for the next available opportunity to short arm. And we'll hang on to Boeing. That's about 80 cents in the money. More troubles for them. Actually, double barrel troubles, DOJ inspection, and then there was like, an issue with a flight in Sydney. All right. Um, so, all right. We talked about what goes up sometimes can come down, and vice versa right now, as there goes AMD right back up to the upside again. So, uh, we're still holding 35% of this trade. So, it's um, you know, still a pretty slippery slope uh, here right now. Oh, we're just getting back up to VWAP, as I see. We have gone into ARM. So, we're into ARM right now, uh, 127. So, we'll. We'll leave this one probably 128-ish, 128.50, you know, something like that. We'll take a little bit more short on arm if it, if it does want to do that. But I'm not, that's just, that's just going to be like one of those sort of shot in the darks there uh, to see if it does want to flush down. The, you know, the bigger trade for me is always going to be on something like an AMD, which just is starting to rip back up here. Touching VWAP again now. So this is probably a decent spot uh, to look for a reload on this name. Now we're, now we're flat on the trade. Here it goes right back up to the upside. So watch out. This is what I was saying. You know, you, you get that big move in, and then all of a sudden you can snap your neck immediately. Look at the futures really starting to go now. So big move down, flushed out some of these names. Definitely flushed out some of these names, Apple's right? almost at 70 and Apple's amazing. I'm so happy with that purchase, honestly. Um, there goes NVIDIA right back up to the upside, taking now up to highs again. As NVIDIA going, AMD going, ARM going down. So that short's starting to work out. But for right now, it's AMD that's on my mind, making that move back up to 202 again. Tesla's getting close to 180 as well. Tesla up to 179. Uh, that's the 180 level that we're mentioning in the pre-market, uh, always tune in early, but wow, this has gotten uh, to be a bit of a high flyer. We said 180 was the only place I wanted to be looking for the short, uh, so that's going to be it. Come on, give me, give me, give me 94s. I want that, I want that Alibaba, not Alibaba. I do that all the oh, time with Alibaba Boeing. Too. Boeing to get down into the 94s. Alibaba, that's actually gonzo already. So it's up at like the 75 level, sorry, 76 level. And we said PDD in relative weakness if that goes up, could end up a short. This got destroyed on Friday. And look, relative weakness in PDD, but it's not near the 118. Got to be patient. So Baba's, sorry, Boeing is in the money, a buck. 
I'm going to make that mistake way too many times. But uh, AMD starting to come back in. I liked 05 as a level, so to me, it needed to be at least at threes for the short. Maybe we have a chance to get there. And Intel, forgot all about Intel. Intel screaming upside. Back through 44. Intel suddenly a strong name. This morning, anyways. All right, guys, we're back into the money pretty severely here with AMD. So let's see how far we can go down. Again, let's just take a bid here if we can get it. I was waiting at $200.55, but we just hit a 90 level right there. So our average price now is 44 short. See how much, much this rips up? Like we just got a 90 fill for 40 cents and I was happy with it. And then now this happens all the way back in again. Let's bid some more at 201. This name is, this, this has been a, I love this kind of trading. I mean, it's, it's been absolutely wild, but you gotta watch out for these trades, right? Because you could be in the money huge and then out and then like, look what just happened. We had just got this at VWAP at $200.90 and now we're dealing with the 50 period. So this is just, wow, look at, look at my guy right here. Look at Palantir, absolutely flying. You wanna talk about a money-making trade. Uh, Palantir down there at this $15, $16 mark that we had talked about. Look Look at this move up for PLTR. It's straight fire uh, right now north side for Palantir. Um, all right, so we do miss that uh, up there on AMD. We're waiting at 203 flat. It's at, okay, here it comes. Hopefully this will give it to us now. This is fine for me. Like it is starting to go back up to the upside uh, right now. It's gonna go against us as you can see, but we're still waiting for that 205 to come in on AMD. I just don't know where the top's gonna be. We'll put on some more shares, seriously, if we can get up here. But there it is, we take a 203. This is what happens to us, man. We get in the money on it, uh, and then it starts to do funny things. So here we go. We are short AMD, but we're just short right Nvidia here. Nvidia curling 875. Okay, good. So hopefully this curls back down as well. Yeah, I just for the first time put offers on AMD trying to grab it because AMD, uh, sorry, Nvidia just got to that 875 level. Uh, of no, it's going I think way. it's going to test higher here on Nvidia and then it'll get me into some. Push. But I got out of Boeing. Boeing got that 194, so we're able to take that and ring the register. But what a crazy, crazy move. Guess what settled down and I think is setting back up again? Oh, Wick man, top through 128 nice. on ARM. It's starting to settle down a little bit underneath that 128 level. Might be able to pick some up uh, on that one. But uh, yeah, Alibaba's starting to go. You mentioned um, Palantir, C3 oh, yeah. AI running. It's a lot of AI names starting to run as well. Watch out for 32 and a half on that bad boy. In crypto land, Coinbase is trying to recover, but again, testing back down at 260, 260 Friday bottom. That's where I'd be looking for any kind of a bounce. BTC's back underneath 72,000, though, so I have to watch out for that 70,000. If you lose 70,000, so I don't necessarily like the long in that case. Where's my offers? I'm there at two half on AMD. Where's my fill? Oh, two half, yeah. Uh, I'm sure at 0220, right? There it is, yes, sir. There's another dollar right there as AMD starting to go down to the downside. We're gonna try to get out some of ARM here at 127 if we can. Uh, we'll watch out for that. We did get, but it's starting to go upside. There's AMD. AMD is a monster trade for me uh, right now, guys. Sorry, I'm, this mic is about to fall off uh, me right here. Who cares at this point? Uh, all right, so there it goes. Nice downside move. We just got a great fill down there as well, by the way. Uh, sit there and you get it. 201 flat right there for AMD. Look at that short. We just put a short on at 203. We just got 201. That's two dollars right there on that part of the trade. Let's see if it will continue uh, to work back again. Here it goes again, uh, back here. I'm gonna put it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are really, really cracking now as we'll face slap this one, man. This is big time. This is big time trade over here for AMD um, as Nvidia starts to go to the downside. Man, this has been another monster, monster morning. And I want to thank everybody. Thank you for all the nice comments over the weekend as well. But yes, we are doing it one more time. There's the arm win as well. Spin it one more time for arm uh, coming back into the downside. So far, so good, man. Two trades so far, and they're really, really cash money. Let's see what Adair is up to. Nice move up here for Endeavor Silver. EXK, they reported earnings this morning, so inline EPS, but a sales beat here for EXK up 10%, guys. All right. So Tesla, we talked about 180. It already did one move from 180 to 179. We're in it in front of that 180 level, got the 50s, looking to pull it back into VWAP. Arm popped about 20 or 30 cents in the money, but could not break 127 even. I think that is going to come in next. Uh, so short Tesla off the 180 level. We did mention we liked it. There was some longs that we were trying to grab. I'm going to cancel that one because we're not going to get Google at 135. Highs of the day on Alphabet, up 1.5%. This is the one I like. Uh, I'm going to ignore VWAP for now. Got to start looking at the higher level support here. 136.80 on any kind of a dip. We'll go for that support level 
and then try to work along. If we even get a, even if we get a dip there, Apple even stronger than that might be the 173. So ARM needs to break and hold underneath 127, then we'll take a first target out. Intel looks pretty bullish. If it holds 44 on a dip, I actually think Intel could turn into a long. We've seen the chip names go, one, most of the chip names go one way Arm. and Intel the other. So I wouldn't be surprised if Intel stayed relatively strong, even if the rest are falling. All right, guys. Um, we're smoking, you know. Uh, yeah. We just got out some more. So I'm going to, I just put another bid a little bit lower here. You know what? Let's let 200 break. I mean, we just got a 200 fill there. Let's see if we can get a 199. Let's put a 199 something here um, on for five, for four bucks. Uh, on AMD's already been up and down and around and, and fantastic. This has been such a good trading day again here today with only two trades on board. And it's just about sticking with your plan. We talked about that, right? Short arm. I mean, it's literally what we wrote down uh, right here on our sticky note. Go find me at Trader TV Sean if you're interested at all uh, for some trade ideas early. And if you also want to trade names that I'm going to be trading, right? Like there's the AMD short, there's the arm short. So it's Bob along, we missed it. I mean, the Bob along is hot fire. It's just, you got to get it early. Uh, and we didn't, we missed it, right? But we got the other two uh, coming in right there. So if you do want to trade with me, go find it at Trader TV Sean, uh, and we'll do that together. Because right now, guess what? Arm is now trying to get into that dollar club. So we really like that. Um, and here it goes. Nice move down in for Arm right now. Bouncing though right away off of VWAP. So we need to be in that VWAP trade right there for ARM. So let's put a bid in there, see if we get that. We should have been a little more diligent and get that bid uh, down there on ARM, but we have enough shares to try it. So let's go uh, again right now for ARM and see if we can get that fill down there. And then we'll hold half. So we're only out of a quarter right now of ARM. If we get another fill down here at 60, that'll put us in a good spot. Come on, ARM, give that fill uh, right now if we can get it. Nice little trade there. And then also AMD making the move back up, giving me those feels one more time here for AMD. Yeah, it's, I'm going to get my first short in, the, in that half on AMD, but I'm out of Tesla when it broke that 180 level. Not going to hold past 180. That was the one level we liked. So it breaks higher. I actually thought we are going to get long on Rivian, when Tesla broke, but Rivian has not broken 13 yet. So that's a bit strange. You feel like there would have been some strength to get us through that 13. I still like it for a breakout and has a chance for it to, for it to go. But uh, Rivian, no movement just yet. I just got into AMD at the half for the first time. If it holds 05s, I still like the short. Let's go over to Adara at the desk. Not seeing any news on this one right now, but Moderna making a nice pop to the upside here, up almost 9%. They do have about just over 6% short float on this, and there's a lot of social media discussion as well of this name right now. So MRNA, very much on watch here, guys. All right, Moderna. Uh, I, so I have an IBIT out here if we break down through this bottom, kind of like 40, 80, something like that. So if it goes down, I have, like, obviously uh, way bigger things to deal with right now, including AMD, nice little move up to 203. We're going to wait. Um, like I said, we've sort of made the money on this one, so sometimes I'll get carried away and get immediately right back into these things, and we don't need to do that at all. So that was something there. Obviously a bad trade uh, by me on ARM because we should have got out and I just wasn't paying attention. So that's, that's really is my bad there uh, on that one. I'm going to put another bid here at 127, see if we just take 65 cents. And then if it comes down into VWAP, uh, we'll see what it does there. It's actually, the pre-market low is holding on ARM right now. Okay, anyone good. watching, 126 and a half was a pre-market low. Here that's we the go. level holding. I think you could buy out in front of that one. Uh, but AMD is coming right yes, back sir. in uh, for that short. I did put a stop. I am going long. If uh, we get a break at 13 on Rivian, that just hasn't happened yet. If you're trying to get a dip buy in Apple, I feel like your chance could be, how about now-ish? Uh, because the Nasdaq's starting to come right back in. If this VWAP's way up there on Apple. It's like 173.30, which is wild. Let's let it settle down a bit, but I think this could be the dip. AMD working. ARM is continuing to hold that 126.5, but if it breaks, I think that's an easy short. Google's the other name that we think is a long opportunity, and that's, again, holding up these down, highs. AMD. You want to see this pull down, give you some kind of a clean entry point. Let's just be calm uh, about finding longs with the market starting to come back in. NVIDIA holding these highs. If NVIDIA breaks 865 down, I think the shorts are really going to start to flush. Uh, yeah, start to flush. Yeah, we're, we're, we're right, right now, man. I feel like we are, in some of these names, really, really, I feel like you're right about that. We are really starting to get going here, uh, big time. 
arm now a dollar thirty uh, in the money on that one. So that's going to be obviously a decent trade there as arm comes back in pretty nicely. AMD is now one and two dollars in the money as that cash cow continues uh, to print for us. Lower, lower, lower right there on this name, and it's been a good one, man, all day here uh, for. AMD uh, just continues. I'm glad that we're, aboard, but we're both in this one. Um, nice move downside right now for that. So, so far so good here. Let's go. I'm, I'm waiting for 199. I, I want a bigger break. This has already been a huge day and we only have two trades on. So we need to find, we don't need to find any more. And this is what I'm talking about. If they don't come in, they don't come in. We're already bidding 12.50 for Rivian. So if that comes in, fantastic. But for right now, no, no worries about anything on this side as we just, you know, Two bucks in the money on ARM, three dollars in the money on AMD, and iBit kind of just hanging out right now. Um, and not still not able to really, my hands are freezing again here today, which they shouldn't be. I don't feel like it's too cold in here. It's freezing outside. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it is freezing outside, that's for sure. Um, all right, where are we going to do with ARM here, man? 126 and still going. Uh, let's wait to see 125 and lower. We are really putting icing, like we're already putting icing on this cake here, and it's 950. So uh, I hope you're enjoying the show as it's um, been, been a really, really good one uh, so far for here, just being able to short AMD and ARM. Just two for two, stick with what you're doing, man, and we'll go on that trade uh, a little bit more here with ARM and AMD. And speaking of possible longs, you're at VWAP now on Apple. So if it's going to bounce, you would think this would be it, like 173 and a quarter. That's what I'm trying to find. Uh, some kind of strength back into Apple, get back above those 40s, and I want to look for the long there. Google's in a very similar spot. I'm going to think Apple first, Google second, just based on the strength that they had on Friday. They were both pretty darn good. It's just Apple was a little bit better. Oh, no, Boeing. Boeing now down at 192. Took a buck and a half there and did not get a re-entry because Boeing never popped. It is only to the downside. And again, if there's no strength in Apple, don't need to force it. I thought you're going to get a bit of a curl there, and that hasn't happened. Yeah, Boeing now down at some fresh lows. Target's starting to come in here for AMD for me. But uh, it can, it can, if it breaks 200, I'm looking for this level here. 198.5 was the opening range support level. But if it can't break 200, we're not going to get that. Arm looking for a reload in front of that 128, which I actually think we're about to get here. So watch out for ARM. Looks like that's starting to come in. PIK is that small cap stock. If it can't break $10, it's hard to go parabolic uh, on that name. So that's that. Uh, well, I actually forget the name of the company. It doesn't matter. PIK. It's a low float runner. It's on the watch list. But that $10 level, you can see multiple rejections up there. So I'd be careful with this. The more it rejects 10, the better chance you have for a flush. But it's breaking it now. So good luck to all of you out there for that one. Yeah, so as this whole market continues to come downside right now, ARM still dollar, AMD $2. We did take a shot here uh, with Apple down at 173. So uh, it looks like Apple wants to break that level. We, we tried to find some strength uh, in it. So we're, we're long right now. And just to see if it does hold into this place, I don't know. We should have just stuck with our bearish activity here and then not given anything back uh, with Apple, but we will do that uh, right now if it does take that low. Uh, and there it is right here as well. If you can see AMD is really, real, there goes Apple. AMD is really cracking, man, uh, down into 199. We're bidding 199. 21s as Apple breaks. So unfortunately, down goes Apple uh, right now, breaking through 173. So we will take an L on that one, which kind of does suck because we did put some shares uh, on that. I thought VWAP could have held there, did not. So here it goes downside. This is why you got to stick with it, right? Even though we'll still take that L, it's still an absolutely monster morning here as we hold on to the right names. Now $4 in the money on AMD and a buck and change here on ARM. So uh, good trading today to say the least. Yeah, I'm out of AMD. You guys know my style of trade in, out. We got that, we got that short into the pre-market highs. Pretty much came, showed you that top. If I like 05s, it didn't show me 05s at the open, but when on the way back up, it showed me the lower high in front of 05, so I short that lower high. I always got to have a setup, and then I'm out at the 99s. So quickly in and out one time. Uh, arm gave a reload as well. We're able to short, and again, it holds 126 and a half. So short in front of the 128, it holds 126 and a half. Eventually, I think it can give it up. I just didn't see Apple the strength come back. into Apple. There is a wick through 173, but I still haven't seen what I consider strength. It looks like it's still in that falling phase. Uh, so I'm going to be a little bit more cautious there. All of a sudden, Google does look a little stronger than Apple. Above VWAP, that actually held VWAP a little bit there on Alphabet. So a bit stronger, I suppose. Coinbase... 
So about that 260 bid, suffice to say there was no, there was nothing. It basically chewed that level up and spit it out. So you don't have to sit out in front of it. If it had bounced and showed any strength, I would have gone long. There has not been any. Coin almost flat after being gapped up like 7%. Uh, there is like the 255 level, but I'm not going to stand in front of that moving freight train. Did we just get 198s? No, we didn't. Okay. So I canceled my 198 here on AMD. I have so many orders out here. It's crazy. This is now $5 in the money. So, I mean, I hope you guys are um, really liking some of this trading here today as we're going to be at the top of the um, pile here. Apple... Bad move, man. We got in and we got out, and that was a bad move. Uh, so we got back in here at 20. Let's take a piece out. I was going to wait for 50s, so let's just do that. Unfortunately, like we would be really be singing if we had just held on to that apple. We were dead right about it, but wrong about the price. It broke through 173.50, or sorry, 173, and we punched out for that hit. So a little bit of a mistake there, but hey, you know what? We're, we're human. We will make those. Uh, there it goes, nicely done to the upside, and you know that's this is what I'm talking about. We, we will go two for three here today um, and still, you know, be cooking. Look at this. Wow. Um, this is what happens when you're, when you're right, honestly. It's just you hold on to something. We talk about this. This is the market, right? This is the market. Uh, all right, ARM, $1.50 now and the money still going. We're going to hold on to that one as well. And I'm not going to drop AMD now. Uh, let's just see how far this can go. Like it's only nine fifty-five or five dollars in the money on our number one trade idea. We have to stick with it. If Baba comes back down as well, then we'll probably try to hit that. We probably should have done a better job there at seventy-five bucks for Alibaba. Maybe we'll have another look there. But honestly, the kind of day that we're having right now on AMD has is, is been a good one. There goes uh, Apple as well. We'll take Intel another broke forty thirty how cents. Intel's breaking as well. No, it broke like two minutes ago. Um, guys. Good day, man. Affirm $37 and trying to go. How low is Uber getting right now? Yuck. Did you see the chart of Uber on Friday? Oh, my goodness. Buy, yeah, buy, buy all these stocks, man. This is, this is, this is getting to be Right. Nasty. So I didn't get uh, Intel on the way down, so I'm catching it on the other direction off that 44 level. Um, so it came there? back up, and I just got 94s, but you can see it failing 44 when the market started to pull back in. I'm not going to give it to VWAP. I'm going to give it to about 44. Uh, maybe not the exact 10 level, but we'll give it to the teams uh, on Intel is what I'm talking. That's what I'm trying to get to there. Google's still giving it a shot. It's giving the old college try here uh, back to the upside. So this is holding VWAP. I didn't grab that bid. I thought we'd get a little bit tighter to 137, like what Apple did, and then it just didn't go. So Google's still relatively strong. By the way, Meta, yikes, $484. So okay. why Meta's 4% down? Like AMD's down 4%, which, I mean, chip name, okay, fine, expect that maybe, but Meta down 4.5%, did not see that coming, but obviously you want to trade the names that are moving the most. Very quickly, this is already flat bottom broke, a big support level at 488. And the next level down is right here on the 15 minute, hard to see, $482, which is what we just bounced off of. If it gets back to the 488 level, I think that's where I'd look to short the pop. Just play relative weakness here. Like it's weak right now, so why wouldn't it stay as a weak name? Market head to the downside. Yeah, we have some unemployment trend numbers coming out here at 10 o'clock. I'm still, we, oh, we talked about getting that Apple trade. By the way, you want to talk about something that would be through the moon right now. Wow, like we had that Apple, but gave it up. Good trade there for sure. Let's check out some Pan W. Uh, we've really liked some Pan W. Uh, wow, nice straight move up today for Pan W, just in the last little bit. Uh, open up at 278, nice move up to 285. Straight up for Pan, I like that trade. We'll have to look to get into that one as well, uh, again at some point. But I, honestly, I'm just really, really enjoying watching some of these names go to the downside. You know what else we're doing damage on right here? Uh, another sticky note name that we've talked about as well. What about ARM? ARM right now, $2 in the money, $4 in the money on AMD, $2 in the money on ARM. But again, you got to take profit when, when it comes through, but I'm not doing that. We've already taken lots out here on AMD. Let's hold something for the dream, as we say. Uh, and then ARM right here as well. I'm bidding, for ARM it's a little different. I'm bidding 125.30s. If it does come in into the low of the day, we'll take that, Phil, um, and then we'll just be able to hold the rest. 
So like I said, man, top stocks today, AMD and ARM, uh, and we're, I mean, it's the only, trade, the only names I'm trading. Apple's made some money back, all obviously going up this high. And then IBIT, once we broke 72,000, man, we talked about uh, dropping that one off. So we did drop off some IBIT, and we're not in that anymore for a losing trade. So IBIT was a losing trade, but we're okay with that one um, as it's been such a remarkable day the other way around. There it is, man, $2.50 on the arm short. So, I mean, this is really starting to work out again, man. We knew this. This was the game plan coming into the week. We talked about it last week. We talked about it on the podcast. Um, like I said, it's on here as trade idea number three on the podcast, on the sticky note. So there we go, man. It is, this has been, I don't know, Neil, this has been such a fantastic day today. Uh, monster winners. This is probably my best morning. Uh, it's not as good as a couple mornings ago, but this is right, right up there as all these names really come in for us today. Yeah, well, Friday was Friday. Friday was better for me than this morning, but that's because there was a there was a good long early, and I haven't found any good breakout longs. It was a good breakout on Nvidia on Friday, but today my first shot in arm, my first shot in the arm on arm was actually a loss breaking down, and then we shorted it twice. I'm now out in front of 125, so wow. both AMD and arm I've taken the profits. I am short into Intel underneath 44, and I do think this has a chance to continue to go. I got to fill there at the 38. If we break the flat bottom here, this has to 43, even. Google, by the way, broke the high of the day just now. Wait a minute. Yes, hopefully. When in doubt, zoom out. Okay. Google made a fresh high of the day, but I just noticed this. I should have zoomed this out before. It did not break Friday's high. It missed Friday's high by $0.08. Cents. So Google has not truly broken out till it gets over Friday's high. I'm going to back off that one a little bit here. Boeing. Yuck. I took 195 half to 194 It went to 192 Boeing absolutely flushed, and I'll use that one because I don't want to hit the other key. Uh, I feel like that's like a bad omen. But uh, yeah, Boeing down 3% and continue to flush. It's uh, 10 o'clock. Let's get to Adara for happening now. Yeah, go for you. We have a move down here for the SPY on the day. We do get that consumer inflation number that's going to be coming out at 11 because of the time difference there so it's actually going to be in another hour for that but not any big numbers coming out today that we do have cpi on tuesday and ppi on thursday so keep an eye on both of those to impact the market not too much other than bitcoin also uh worth keeping an eye on as well today making these uh, new all-time highs and the market itself just slightly to the downside but lots of individual movers to talk about tesla up over three percent update from uh, that european gigafactory situation in berlin saying that they should hopefully have power restored and reconnected by uh, tonight so nice look here up tsla up about uh, three and a half percent we also have Boeing very much to the downside, down almost 3% right now. Delta CEO saying that their Boeing 737 MAX deliveries they expect to be postponed until 2027. And also the DOJ investigation now into the Alaska Air Fuselage situation back in January. Last but not least here, um, Alibaba, B-A-B-A, -A, also making a nice move to the upside here after an higher than expected CPI print coming out of China. So lots of names to keep an eye on as we head into the rest of the day, guys. So one of the things I say a lot, and I'm saying it again, it's okay to be wrong. It's not okay to stay wrong when you're trading. Tesla now at 182. We shorted the 180 level. This little curl in here, when it breaks out above, we get out. That was the difference for me. You saw what happened, all the chip names to the downside uh, on Friday. Like You just don't want to be fighting things against the trend. You take your shot. If it's wrong, you just get the heck out of Dodge uh, when you can and hope the getting is good. Uh, Alphabet. If it breaks Friday's high, then I'd look for a breakout to the long side. And as the market is making fresh lows on the NASDAQ, this one is trying to hold on to VWAP. I think it looks pretty solid. We didn't see anything specifically on Meta here. I mean, Adair just put in the chat that um, uh, former President Trump was on CNBC this morning and compared TikTok security risks to that of Facebook. If that's the reason Meta's down 5.5%, I'd be surprised. Like, I thought this was going to give us a pop in a VWAP to short. Meta just cracked 475 here. This is a, starting to get a little bit intense. Like, it's almost too far too fast on Meta. And you start thinking about the rubber band action. And we pulled out that 15-minute chart for you, and we're saying the 4 
80, that got cracked right quick. Now I'm starting to look at 475 as a bottom, who knows? But I just got into Google, I'd rather try going long something which is strong as opposed to trying to figure out what in the you know what is going on uh, with Meta. But Meta's falling like an absolute rock. Alphabet breaks Friday's high. Could have been a 138 break, but I waited for it to break Friday's high through 138.11, I believe it was. Once it goes to the half dollar, we'll get some out. Look to start buying some dips. As this is one of the few names that's strong. I mean, sorry, Tesla's strong. Uh, Alphabet is strong. Apple was the strongest on Friday. It's back up at those highs, so Apple trying to break the highs as well. So you got three of the most beleaguered names out of the Magnificent Seven that are holding the highs of the day when everything else is weak. And uh, what is a my friend AMD doing? Can't get to VWAP here. I thought we'd get a retest up at VWAP, maybe the 201 for re-entry. If we can't get that, I'll take myself back over to ARM and see if we can't get a lower high on ARM as well. I only want to be shorting those two chip, well, the chip names uh, that we like for the short side. We want to be looking for longs and some of that stronger uh, tech names. And by the way, Finch Jane just said, this is surprising, Palantir all the way back down to 26. So it broke out and went to 26.8, all the way back down to 26. That is a heck of a reversal. Got to watch out for that. Uh, I'm not in it, but I am in Google here. Not that they're remotely related. It couldn't quite get to the 50s. It just stalled at 40s. I'm going to get it out in front of, in the 30s, just looking for that local high after the breakout uh, on Google. So you still have strength in Apple, Alphabet, and Tesla. I have no idea why Meta is so weak. If it has something to do with that, uh, Trump, uh, President Trump and, and TikTok, or being compared to TikTok, that seems like a bit much to me. <coughs> But now down over 5% is meta and still at the lows. Yeah, we talked about, um, we talked about meta earlier this morning that it was going to be a wild ride. So no surprise there with meta today. Um, if you looked at the way it traded on Friday, I mean, um, this, this is why we indicated that. If you remember at the beginning of the day, it was like 9 o'clock. And I was like, the names are going to want to watch today, meta. And if you look, look what happened on Friday. Like it was 524 down to 500 and just clocked right there. What happened to ARM? Wow, okay, did we just get an ARM? We got, we got, our, we got our last bid, and that's that. Money, 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 and that's a wrap on ARM. Money, money, money. So right there, man, we'll put ARM in that pipe and smoke that one as well. That just goes all the way down to 125. That's a $3 winner right there for ARM. So let's take a... Randy's still loving that XOM trade, but uh, XOM's ripping. Uh, I don't know if it's doing that today. AMD, nice move down. Hmm... Everything is good. Uh, yeah, Meta, Meta will, will be range bound uh, once it finally settles down. But for right now, it is straight to the downside. Uh, for those of you talking about that in the chat, let's look at Palantir. And, and by the way, we said that we were bearish today. So that's when the market was about 0.4 or so, and now, now down 0.7 uh, as we continue to make that move lower here. And there's Palantir. Sometimes it's a better fade than it is a long. Like it gets going and then it gave you the top and right now it's trying to give you this bottom at 26. I really wish I believed in this market because I would go long here on Palantir, but I don't. So uh, we won't. And again, you have to have some kind of conviction in your trading or else uh, you're just going to be spinning your tires. So right here, AMD does go down to, I, I feel like I need to put a bid here now. Uh, enough, I mean, if it continues to go after this, then great. But 197, I mean, that's a good one. The market can still fall a lot more than this. This is like one of those OB moments here where we talk about like, you're looking at, oh my God, the market feels like it's falling down. It's not really. I mean, you're only down 0.7. You're back to 18.1 right now. We can, heck a, we can have a heck of a lot bigger move than this. It hasn't Let's, been that much. Really. Yeah, exactly. It hasn't even been that bad. Uh, all right, so AMD is starting to make moves though, right? Because now you're starting to look at this gap right here that goes all the way back to March 1st. So not even that far back, about 10 days back in there into 195. So I feel like that's something that maybe a lot of traders might want to look at. We are back into Apple right now as it has faded back oh, down. Right. So yeah, here Google's we... going to come out if that's... Yep. Okay, so here we Google's go. stronger, but this is going to come out too. Okay, good. So Apple right now, uh, Apple's not coming out at all as Apple right now makes that move in back into the downside. Hopefully we can hold these levels, Neil, because we got another banger right now on Apple. So there it is right now. We'll take 20 cents. Hopefully it can go back up to the upside. I don't know if this is going to be a banger or not, but at least we have something long if it does go back up. So right now we'll watch out for Apple, the new, the new reloaded position. Arm may, may be out of it too early or maybe out of it right at the right spot. We had diamond hands for a minute. They're on arm taking $3. So, um, yeah, big day here. Hopefully it can continue. It's only 10-10. 
Yeah, it's still early, man, but I'm getting out of that breakout trade on Google. I'm not holding a high of the day break into VWAP. Those are two separate trades. Either I'm getting a break that works and goes stair step up, or I wait for the dip buy, and the dip buy is into VWAP on, on Google. I almost said Apple, but I think if it's going to hold, Apple's got to hold too. Uh, I would tend to think both of those are going to go uh, next to each other. Tesla is still strong. It's doing its first dip. Obviously, if I like the short at 180, one of my favorite trades is resistance Oosh. and support. So if it gets down into 180, I'd be looking for a long up there. AMD is back in VWAP at the $200 level. So yeah, this looks like it could be it. If we fail a break at the 200, I'm jumping back into this. And arm back up to 128. Okay. Or oh, sorry, 127. If it gets into the mids, I'm looking to reshort uh, that name. So I got it of AMD at the 99. But if it fails this 200, I'm going to be jumping right back into it. Do have eyeballs on what's happening with crypto. That pullback only got to like 71.5. Like it actually didn't fall that far despite how oh. weak Coinbase was. All right, now I'm going to get into AMD. Oh, you guys, man, you guys are, um, you guys are killing me over here. I said, is there any questions? How are you so cool? Tell that to my kids. Uh, thank you for the Rivian bounce. You are welcome for that one, man. What's up, Renata? Um, I'm really glad that you're starting to follow some of the trades. I've noticed that uh, recently, Renata. So thank you so much for that one. Um, okay, so one's because one's expiring. So Mr. Long Shorts, anybody that's trading the H contract has to be out by this Friday, the third Friday. So the price will be more, more exact, but the M contract is the future contract of it. So there's some uncertainty in that and you pay a little bit of a premium for that. So as they come closer to expiration, you'll get more near the cash price for that, but there won't be enough liquidity. So you can just Google, there's more technical answers. Just Google that one, why the contracts flip over. Um, and then the next question is, uh, can you spin the money? Cause we slaughtered it, what's up? I will not call you Big Kyle Burdett. Is that Sharif? Uh, right there. What's up, Kyle? Um, and then there it is right now. We love you. We love you too, Freddie, the friendly guy. Uh, I, I paid your car payment today. Well, welcome to that one uh, as well. Now, we just spun the money there, Monty. Thank you so much uh, for all the love there in the chat as we continue uh, to throw down every single day on the show. So hopefully you guys are able to see this. Um, see the trades in there. And if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, please put them in the chat because that's really what we're here for um, is to help. Well, I'm here to trade, but you know, if we're gonna do it in front of you, uh, that's even better. You might as well take some questions while we're at it. Uh, there it is right now. Nice move up. Look at that for Apple, booyaka. There it is right now, putting it into our pipe again for Apple, all the way up to 77s as we continue to go. And there goes AMD one more time. Thank you so much, Jared TV. All that kind of nice talk there uh, in the chat. We put a lot of work into what we're doing here every single day, and I, and I do, do appreciate all the love as, as we all do. So yeah, triple quad, they kind of changed those names of that witching. So it's all find out um, what it is right there. But that's what we're doing, man. We're bringing the pain every single day, regardless of witching or not. Yeah, exactly. It's just another reason to look at, to look at the market uh, for extra volatility. And that's all you really care about at the end of the day on Friday. But the, we got to get to Friday first. Right? Like, forget about Friday, forget about ARM expiration tomorrow, forget about next week, uh, Reddit IPO. Those are all exciting Ooh. events. Well, that's right. Reddit, we didn't even mention that this morning. Reddit is on Friday or Thursday that was of such next, an easy talk. Check that, Thursday of next week. It's a Reddit IPO, I want to say. But the AMD, we had one tray when it set up underneath the pre-market low, and then it just set up there at VWAP underneath 200, was able to get to the 99s again. Boeing is continuing to flush. I still own some of this in my long-term account. And part of me was going to sell this if it broke that level. I obviously didn't. I, I would have told you guys if I did. But uh, Boeing, flat bottom break. Support is right here at 189, 190. If you go back to November, if it can't hold on to that, I think Boeing, well, it's already in trouble. It's already a disaster. But uh, yeah, looking for short pops. Uh, on Boeing as it continues to absolutely flutter. 193 would be the entry point that we try to take. I mentioned that there was some weakness in pin duo duo relative to Alibaba. That's still true and it's making lower highs. Might look at a VWAP or trace on PDD up two and a half percent, but it's been down only since the open. I just realized we didn't have a stop here for Apple, um, but we just took a whole bunch out. Like, he just ripped up into the 70s again. A lot of our outs are in the 50s uh, here. We, did, we didn't max out this trade, not even close, uh, on Apple as it's falling back in right now. So, um, well, I don't know, man. Like, we talked about a negative market here today. It's, it's, it's down half a percent since we talked about it. 
uh, and it's it's at lows. So I feel like we are we've been 100% right uh, in calling this bear market here today, uh, considering where we I mean bearish activity. This is not really. I don't, this doesn't feel overly bearish in my opinion, but it is to the downside right now. Apple's still trying to hold out, but there it is right now, 18,144. Yeah, I think it's pretty bearish. I really do. Um, yeah, but we're, this is why we're making the money on all of these trades. You know, it's not, it's like when you have an idea about what you want to do, this is what you have to do. Uh, is Walmart a buy here? What's up, Killer Cam? Where is Killer Walmart Cam. Right uh, is it a buy at 60? Um, 180 is on uh, Yeah, 180 is 60, of course. Okay, so the dollar's flying since T Money. What's up, T Money? Uh, Tesla's at VWAP as well. Look, I'm. Like for, for those of you just watching me here, I'm kind of in chill mode. So I'm going to be offering here some 40s for Apple. I'm also at 49 as well. So if we get that fill, we'll just do that and we'll just start to top it out. It's only 10, 14. I want, I want some more for sure. But at the same time, like we're, we're down here, we're trying to figure it out. We've got one long, we've got one short. Um, and then what's NVIDIA doing now again? 60. 860. So NVIDIA is not really doing anything right now. I've been doing a lot today. Uh, topped out at 875 a couple times and didn't really bottom until we broke through that 850. Had one crazy wick down there to 840. And uh, then we went from 840 to 875. And we talked about this in three minutes. We went $40. And then we did fall back in and we just ho-hummed it and took advantage of this name um, and put this to number one. So, so far, so good there. Look at iBit, man, wow. Now Wish we would have had a little bit more on that one there. We talked about, I, I think we talked about getting out at $40.75 anyways. So the fact that we got out at the 200 period break is fine by me. If it fail breaks this high. But we will have a red name and it'll be IBIT because we don't have an out higher than where we got in. So uh, that's going to be a bad one for us. But I still do like it and maybe, maybe Coinbase at some point as well. Uh, so I just got into Tesla off that VWAP, but if it can't bounce here, I, I do favor the shorts. But there's only three names out of the, it's a three mag seven names that were all pretty weak the last little bit. I think those are the ones that I like for bounces. We already tried Google, if can't hold on Tesla, we'll have to move on. But the market is trying to bounce. I'm looking for a failed breakout of the fresh high on IBIT because wicking these tops for a, a scalp short has been working. But it has to show you, try to take the top, get a couple cents higher, maybe get from 41.40, break it, fail 50s, and then come back in and try and get it into VWAP. Like, that's what I'd be looking for on IBIT. Whoa, AMD just broke VWAP. This is why you take profit. Now you've got some higher lows. We reshorted in front of 200, got it down to 198, sorry, 199.80, and we're breaking 200. So I j jam out and wait for the next trade, which would be back up here at that open range top at the 203 level. So we're preserving a little bit of capital uh, there. Tesla starting to bounce off of VWAP. Hasn't really gotten that far. It needs to get into that 181. Then we can take some profit. I feel like this IBIT did not break the high, got to the high, tagged it, but no break. So you can't have a false break if you don't get a break in the first place. All right, we can cancel our arm uh, stop there. We, what a good out on arm uh, to the downside. And what a good hold on AMD, except for the fact that we didn't reload it uh, up there at, at 201. So we should have obviously did that. We did not. Oh, well. Uh, and look what's happening to Apple right now. It is starting to get right back up to the upside. So spin it one more time on Apple there as that's starting to go. And patience um, is the key to this game here today for sure. So far, it's starting to go. Yeah, we have CPI and PPI this week. Uh, SOFI. SOFI. Yeah, big move down today for SOFI. Again, you know, it's not too big as it's only 1%, but it is straight to the downside right now. And I, I mean... I was only going to look at this because if you see where you're coming in right now into 760, like that's, that could be a hold. Whoops, right there. So we've held this a couple times, 750 basically. So that's what we're doing right now on SoFi What's into the these frame? levels. That's just a 20 minute chart, but you're trying to head right into that one right now on SoFi. Oh, snap. Uh, yeah, Snapchat and oh, Meta and all. No, I didn't things. mean Snapchat. Rivian broke 13. Oh, there goes AMD. I just realized, if I say, oh, snap then you're going to think I was talking about Snapchat. No, no, R Rivian broke the 13 level. I just got yeah. 1301 so alongside, although you don't 13, yet see it. No. It'll update in a second. It just broke. There you go. You'll see it update. As uh, We just got some Tesla out off the highs, but 13 just broke out. As far as where it could go, I mean, there's a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda, but uh, the tops on Friday was 1350. So that puts a nice bow on any kind of a target Whoa. you might put in there. If it gets to 1350, you know my style. I'm out of almost all of it at that price. I like to play inside of that range if we can. So new position is a second long. 
How am I long? Oh, Apple. How am I only two longs right now? Uh, so we just got to fill on Tesla. We'll ring the register there in front of 181. And now Rivian long. Hey, at least we're consistent in a couple of EV names. But I want to get some chip shorts again. Yeah, we got, uh, we got a nice trading going on right now as well. We've got Apple to the log side, but we just did get hit on AMD. We talked about that, uh, breaking through 201. So again, we're just going to try the short. Doesn't work, and we're going to get out. So I still feel like it could work, but hey, if the market wants to rally back a little bit here, uh, we will try to give it that space to do that. NVIDIA is near the high. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So maybe, maybe some of these chip names are a little bit overcooked, and, and that wouldn't surprise me if they were, I mean, to the downside, right? So let's see what happens. Now, let's give this one to 201.50. If it breaks higher than that, then we'll get out. So we'll, we'll re-enter into a short here on AMD, put a little bit of money down and see if it wants to get down uh, into the 60s, into the 50s, uh, and then back into 200. And, you know, if that happens, then, you know, we'll make back a little bit of that dancing uh, that we did right there. Because we kept getting out at 201, 201.10, 201.15, like give it a little bit of room. But there's not really too much point in giving this too much room because the way this is moving, when you're wrong, it's just going to go. So it's not, you know, you, you can't really outsmart this name here today. Don't average into it. Take the wins when they're there, right? And then let them settle down when they're not. So right now, AMD, we'll pull it back in. We're short now at 90s. Why is Amazon so weak? It's at Amazon's weak as well. Amazon I like for the strength. Oh, 172, okay. So this was another name. Good call on that one. We're down to 171.50. Maybe we should be picking this one up uh, as well. But there we go. Nice trade back in for AMD. So that's that trade we're talking about. And we also got out of Apple up there at 65 or something like that. Uh, yes, whatever this is, 60, yeah, 65, 66, uh, as that's starting to print. And then there we go. AMD gives me that 64 print and then right back up to O's again and now try to take out the top. So yeah, take your profits where they lie. VWAP would be really nice if we can get down for AMD down to 200. Here it comes, down to 200 and change for AMD. We might just put a bit out uh, immediately right now. We're at $200.20. Just keeps on bouncing off right now. Here it comes. All right, let's go. Maybe we'll get this. Go, come in. Oh, we almost did uh, right there let me put a bit at 35 and see if we can get that all right um, all right lots of action over here let's just go over to Adara and then we'll be able to come back she's over there at the screen IWM Russell 2000 trying to recover a little bit but still down about 80% on the day or sorry 0.8% of the day so weak alongside a lot of these other uh, names that we're seeing right now but there are some uh, exceptions here in the small cap moves to the gap side, including TCBP. This is TC Biopharma. Not seeing any particular catalyst on this, but they do have a float of about 750,000 shares. So very low float runner here in TCBP. We also have here uh, Mesoblast, M-E-S-O. This one announcing that the FDA has supported accelerated approval pathways for one of their uh, treatments for a specific kind of heart failure. So nice look here as well for M-E-S-O up over 30%. Last but not least here, LM Funding America, LMFA. This is a Bitcoin-related name. Uh, just basically providing their monthly update for their operations, including 26.9 Bitcoin mined in the month of February. So nice look here for LMFA as well, guys. All right. Well, Save. yeah, uh, I, I don't have, you know, we just, AMD went, went that basically that dollar. I mean, it's a dollar right now. It's 80 cents in the money. We took that out at VWAP. We talked about that. So that's going to be a nice move upside. Um, Apple, I just kind of want to leave it alone. If it does fall back in here, it falls back in. I'd much rather just play this short. I feel like AMD is really the cash cow here for me today. Uh, so is ARM. So is, I mean, they're all fine. It's just really, it's this one. So here we go. AMD, another move to the downside. Microsoft is still a short. Look, they're all still shorts. We, I've been raising capital here for a minute on some of these names and it's because uh, just the market's pretty heated. We're starting to come back in a little bit. We dropped, what, 1.3 on Friday, something like that. Um, and then now we're down another 0.7 here today. So it's not like we're getting crazy to the downside, but, you know, some names you're going to want to start to look for, you know, possible areas to start picking them up. And uh, Microsoft maybe in and around 400. I could see some traders getting somewhat interested in there. So, um, you know, watch, watch out for that. And then the other name that I wanted to look at quickly before we go back was going to be Costco, down another 2% uh, here today off of a 6 or 7% move there off earnings. Nice little kick down. And then Uber was another name that I'm pretty interested in on the downside as well. So here's what's happening, man. We're starting to 
we're starting to get some of those discounts, right, uh, that we've talked about. So making me a little nervous about Oracle earnings coming up uh, this week, yeah, tonight, as we've bought that name. I mean, I'm only long at like 107, 108. It's not like it's been, it's been bad. Like if I bought NVIDIA the day that I bought Oracle, we would have been laughing, right? But Oracle right now nicely done to the upside. We bought it into this dip uh, right here. We've actually bought it before then. Uh, this, this dip went all the way to 118, back in and double topped again at 118 ahead of earnings. Not super excited, I must admit, uh, about Oracle. So we'll, we'll wait to see what that hits through today. But yeah, man. Uh, good day so far, Meta, Tisha. It. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go sometimes, ahead. sometimes the best thing what? you can do is have a stop, don't fight it. Tesla, we got to bounce off VWAP. I like that. I like that. It turns around right there at like 72 or 73, was able to get profit on it, and then just, just stop it out. You know, like do not let that turn into a mess. We just jump out of Tesla. All of a sudden, underneath VWAP and weak, Rivian is yeah. holding. Look so it was that. actually broke Jeez. higher and then held this to 13.10. It looks like it couldn't get past, but then wick to 95s, which is oddly enough where my stop is underneath. If this holds on 95, I guess we're still going to be into Rivian. Arm did not give us a chance to get back into it, unfortunately. But uh, if you're still looking at uh, Meta, I mean, Meta, no VWAP push yet. It's trying to hold 476 is the current low of the day. You're not getting much in terms of pops to be able to join this to the south side. VWAP now sits at 484. I mean, I, want, I do want to short the pop. We'll see if we have a chance to get it. Um, Palantir was strong, and then all of a sudden, even what was strong has turned weak. Maybe you can get VWAP in there. I like failed breakouts, because the names that were breaking out and trap some people in breakout trades, they can be good uh, to short the pop, because if people start to take their profits out when it gets to VWAP, they're happy. Uh, to be able to, not profits, they're able to take something out that they might be bag holding from earlier in the morning. You get those sells back into VWAP. That's if you can even get it. So I'm looking to short pops on Meta, uh, looking to try to grab back in AMD. I've only taken two swings at it when they both set up. And if a third one happens, there's two ways it could play. We could play right back in here off the three to four level, or it could be right at this 01, but I need that one to set up uh, in AMD. So we're just into Rivian, that 13 break, Friday's high. Sorry, Friday's resistance level. The actual high is 13.50. Afternoon resistance was 13. Maybe, maybe so if I went down too far here. Uh, Why? Where'd it go? Five. Yeah, I didn't go down too far. It just maybe went down, went down too far. Uh, like, it only down half a percent. That's but... 760, 765 maybe there for Rivian. Um, still watching AMD and NVIDIA. NVIDIA is still doing a little bit of a dance. Pretty happy with getting out of Apple there. We, are, we still do have, oh, we talked about not having a stop for Apple, but you know what? I mean, th just this bottom is fine for me. Uh, where is that? That's 172.90 right there for Apple. So we'll, we'll try, I mean, 172.90. We might as well try another bid down here if we can get it. So we'll try uh, one more bid down here. Put the stop in at one, whoopsies, uh, 172 here. I'm oh, sorry about that. Oh, no. Put it on your screen here. Oh. Uh, 172. You I'm know, blaming the state 80, of New York on the keystroke I just made. 89, something like that. Uh, okay, we'll see what happens right now as everything's starting to fall down. So here we go. A dollar in right now on AMD as this is starting to go upside um, and then, or downside, sorry. And then we'll watch out for Apple as we got reloaded right now into Apple. Nice little ups. Okay, here we go. Yes, sir. That's a good one. We'll take that, man. Nice little bump up there for Apple. Let's go, man. Uh, that was a good take. We weren't too excited about this trade but now we're getting much more into it uh okay apple good all right so there you go seems like everything we're touching right now uh is turning into gold it feels like but we'll just wait for this apple maybe it goes up maybe it doesn't but right now it's just cash cow uh central and we're just going to try to stack it higher and higher here as we wait to see what this market wants from us but right now a nice move up for Apple off of 173. How many times? Three reloads down here. Let's just keep taking it, get it in, get it in, get it in, and get it out. And that's what we're doing right now with Apple. Crazy. Uh, but I just, no, I like, I like it. Uh, Rivian, I made a bit of a keystroke error just there. I'm going to blame Daylight Savings Time on it. But uh, already had an offer and then went to, went to cancel the offer and then put a different one in and ended up making the smart mistake of not canceling and then throwing an offer out. So instead of not getting anything until it got to 20s, I end up like double outing. I still have a piece, but it's a small piece on Rivian. It just got up 13 to 13, uh, 15. So it's already given you a decent size move. I think the quarters could be next. We'll see what happens. There is this uh, uh, halt trade in here. I saw it, uh, Tisha Perkins. I also have a halt scanner up as well. 
uh, for this ENCP. It's done 100,000 in volume. That's a hard pass. For, it's a hard pass. When you've halted multiple times and you've done 100,000 in volume, that means there's no liquidity. No liquidity means no trade. But the tap, I'd say, is relatively irrelevant right now because it halted at 12.30 and the theoretical auction price is $39. So I'm going to assume that there is a real problem with liquidity for this stock, whatever ENCP is. But 100,000 means I'm not trading it. I don't see how you can get in and out of that and not get rinsed. Um, you can't really mitigate risk if you have no idea what price you're going to get when a level goes. And that's what would happen on a stock like that. Um, Arm is back into these highs. I have not traded it since we had the 127 half a couple times, and it's getting right back into this 127 half. So we'll let it get back up into this. The t my stop is at the high of the day, which is 128.15. If it doesn't break that, then we're looking to re-engage the short on arm. So just the Rivian long, which is working. And I don't know if AMD is going to give me the fill back in. I think arm will come first. It's a little bit stronger. Yeah, it's funny because like the only two, like I was saying, like the two biggest stocks here is going to be AMD and ARM, and this is like the same ones we're talking about. But hey, man, this is why we do things like the sticky note. You know, like um, take take the time uh, to go and do some research and find find things that you like and that you trust. And you know, I get the watch list on TraderTV.live, and I try to find some names on there. So there's AMD and ARM, right? We're not in Baba. There's Rivian. Shout out to Renata as well. I said long 1250, the bottom was 1255. She nailed that. Congratulations to Renata for that one as well. And then we had Amazon up here as well as a buy. So that one we didn't look at yet because of the way this market was. Oh yeah, and then we also did talk about too that we felt like bearish to start here on the market. So we won't look long until certain levels hit. But that did hit there for Rivian. So we should have probably been in that one. So that's my bad again uh, on that as we will wait to see what happens now with Rivian. Uh, hopefully going back up as I know Neil's long on that one. So we'll hope for that. Um, and then, you know, we're going to end the day at our highest spot, you know. Um, I mean, it's only still 30 minutes to go, but I feel pretty comfortable because we're short AMD and then we're long this bad boy right here as Apple continues to try to go higher. Let's just take a 42, why not? There it is, someone said their favorite's the cash cow. So there it is right there again, boom. Um, and that's what it's been like today. You know, nothing, no losing names here. We, we did lose on IBIT. Uh, actually, so we do have one losing name. This, this was right here earlier on. We got out of this immediately, but then it started to rip back up to the upside. So, so far, so good there today. PIK, yeah, that was one of those other that names. That was that small cap. Yeah, a little small cap name that was uh, moving around. We gained some love for that in the chat as well. 711 here for PIK, up 157%. And uh, the NASDAQ is trying to bounce off VWAP right now, trying to go long. Watch out, NVIDIA's got a flat top. Yeah, I just saw that because here, here. comes uh, AMD again all the way to the upside. So good job taking out of some of that. Let's get a little bit more into AMD, but we're watching out for this top take. And hey, if the market continues to rip, I'm down with that, man, because we I feel like we got a real strong name here in Apple. And we're only 70 cents right now in the money on that one as well. And there's the reload in AMD. Let's see if we can get some more profit on this name as we're gonna go a little scalpy here on half of these as we go over to the desk with Adara. One crypto name to talk about today is, of course, going to be MicroStrategy, up 9% set for its fourth positive day in the row here is MSTR. This one uh, acquiring $821.7 million worth of Bitcoins. So that amounts to about 12,000 Bitcoin, bringing the total holdings for MicroStrategies up to around 205,000 Bitcoin, according to Bloomberg report. So nice look here for MSTR up almost 9%. Bitcoin itself making new all-time highs here, trading above that 72,000 area. So after uh, these fall that we had on Friday, once we hit that 70,000, Bitcoin picking right back up here. Nice look for BTC. Also a nice look for... Uh, these other names as well. Ethereum up uh, well above that 4,000 level now, up about 3.5%. Solana up almost 4%. Ripple up almost 2%. Cardano, Cardano up 2 and a third percent. So good look for a lot of these other crypto coins as well. And we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. You can sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders. Just use the code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to checkout. So of course... I don't, I, I don't get the fill. We're talking about spreads and slippage and all that good stuff. But when you're in position and a stop goes, if you miss your stop, if you get slipped, that's just extra that you lose. But if you're trying to get the other direction, 
The problem is, like, you then don't get the trade on the long. So I did not get that 875. Like, NVIDIA was a flat top breakout, and it just took out 75. Went straight to 80. Now the 880 break is there, so we'll see if we can get that. But, uh, yeah, we didn't get the last break. It doesn't mean you don't throw the order out there, though. I mean, you just kind of hope to get the fill uh, when you have a breakout trade. You get it or you don't get it. For your stop order, you want to hit because you just want to get out wherever it happens to be. So we missed the 75. We'll see if we get 880. It's now all of a sudden you're flying to the upside uh, on NVIDIA and some other chip names. Yeah, shout out to you, Ponzi, Fonzi, and everybody out there as well. Um, yeah, I mean, we got, we got short and we got out. We talked, we talked about what we were doing right now. And like I said, we'll still keep... You know, very positive day, and we will not right now finish at the top because we got hit there on AMD. And you know what? As the market goes to the upside, look, man, this little proxy that we had is definitely not a proxy at all. As you can see right now, Apple not going up. Whoops. Meanwhile, chip names continue uh, to fly high as well. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to watch all of this. What's up, Adara? Interesting look here for KC. This is Kingsoft Cloud Holdings. Got a... Upgrade here from JP Morgan to overweight, but a price target decrease to $4.20. Jeffrey also reducing its price target here for KC, but either way, the same up about 30% here, guys. One. So just as quickly as it broke out on NVIDIA, that 880 level, this is hard to see because, I mean, it was down at $845, so the scaling's going to be a little bit jacked up on this. It got all the way to 883. I took a couple of bucks on it, and then it came right back flushing through. So the breakout trade has come and gone very quickly, but it's still, I think it's a relatively strong name. I just need to break out there. If I like an 875, I can't, I'm not going to like 880 better than I like 875. I thought 875 is easier to hold than the 880, so I'll look for a dip back into 75 if I'm going to get into NVIDIA to the long side. So that takes me back to only being in Rivian, which is now at 1330. The high on Friday for Rivian was 13. I said 50, but it's like 55, a distinction without a difference. I think it gets up there, and you're probably looking for a little bit of a turn uh, on Rivian. Uh, so I'll check back in. NVIDIA, I think, because it went back green again, the fear with this is when the dip buyers come into Rivian when it looked like a weekday is that it's going to start ripping faces off. Rivian, sorry, NVIDIA is the kind of stock that if it holds on to VWAP and stair steps it up, it's going to trap some people that look for a continuation of Friday's action. I was in AMD when 875 broke on NVIDIA, so I did take this hit, shorted essentially 01s, and then got out when it broke that local high, which is that 01 half but then I missed the 875 long. If I'd gotten the 875 long, we'd be laughing. Uh, but unfortunately, hey, you throw a stop order, doesn't mean you're gonna get the fill, necessarily. If you use a limit order like I do, then you're prone to getting missed sometimes. Yeah, no, for sure, and that's... Um, like we do, I should say. I mean, no one really here uses market orders, so. No, no, well, I use a market order once it breaks a key level. That's why I got a $3 slippage on Nvidia the other day, which was the best slippage I could have got because uh, it went down another, Eight dollars or something off that break. Yeah, so was it ninety twos when I looked at it almost instantly? Yeah, yeah. You do play around with that a little bit here. Um, okay, so I'm actually going to cancel my. Well, we'll we'll wait. We're. I don't know. Like I don't know if be about being short Meta and being long Apple at the same time makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. Other than I'm just trading off of levels. Meta comes right into VWAP again right now, so we're going to go short. We're short at four eighty four sixty. Well, it's got to VWAP. Uh, well, it's yeah. I mean, you can get it now if you want. It's not the greatest. Uh, but we'll wait right now to see oh, where it know. goes. There it is. Nice little move downside for Meta as we're now starting to crack a lack lack. Uh, hopefully to the downside, but there it is push in we get 484 flat and now there it is holy crap look at this name getting excited we just said we may not be at days high when the market ends but then guess what the golden touch happens right there on meta and now it's flushing down a dollar 50 right there for us on meta let's see how low can it go uh right now for meta we'll take another bid now and then we'll see if we can hold the rest as meta right there instantly right up the leaderboard on one trade goes meta but you know as fast as it goes up it can come right uh, if as it goes down, it can come rifling right back up. So there it is. We'll take another bid right there for a dollar fifty. It's meta, and it's fantastic right there. The only problem now is what are we going to do with Apple as that's coming back in? I know what. Let's take a piece out here before it breaks lower. But right now, there's Meta, the newest victim right there. Another two dollar winner on board there for Meta. So boom goes the dynamite. Let's see how low Meta can go down to four seventy six. M E T A. Yeah, let's see if it breaks, man. 
Well, I think it might. It's one of the weakest, weak, one of the weakest names out there. But you'll see, I have no positions. That means what? That means that Rivian got to 13, almost 1350. It just spiked, got to 1343, wow. and a little bit of a pullback in there. But I'm not going to look the gift horse in the mouth. We thought this to Friday's high. It just made that other push into into fresh highs on Rivian. Like to take those target outs. Kind of stick to what works for me. I've been saying that's been working, so I'm going to stick to that. It's been a productive morning. I'll tell you right now, if you look at what's going on in crypto, Coinbase is weak. It's, I know it's up 3.5%, but you're getting lower highs put in on Coinbase. Meanwhile, on BTC, on Bitcoin, BTC. On Bitcoin, you're actually holding around 72. It's trying to put in a higher low. If Bitcoin retraces back to the morning lows, then you know, Coin couldn't really break down from, couldn't break above VWAP. And I look at this 267 to 268, don't wonder if there's not a shorting opportunity uh, over there uh, in Coinbase. Relative to BTC, BTC, BTC is actually starting to come back down in. So Coin looks like a short off that 267 for me. I'm out of Rivian. If I get back in, it's got to be VWAP. I think that's the next place we'll go hunting. Uh, Boeing, by the way, uh, shout out to you, Yanis, in the chat. It is almost at VWAP. Not quite, but it's getting pretty close. We do want the next curl, but if it doesn't get to VWAP, then who cares? Didn't get to VWAP the first time. So a weak stock might not get back to VWAP on a bounce. And if it curls at 192, then I'll take the 192. We got out of that one a little bit too early. Hey, thank you, Daryl, uh, for your nice comments there about Meta. Uh, thank you, Monty G, for the fire comments as well. Um, this it means you know it means a lot to be able to give trades, especially when they work. So there's a good one there. And then look what just happened to Apple. You know, while Neil was speaking there, we talked about trying to get out, and look what just happened. We were able to get out. Like we got some out at tens, we got some out at 03s and 04s, and we held half of it, and then got that out for the loser there on Apple as it's breaking lower, lower, lower. But hey, we can't be any happier, happier, happier than we are right now on Meta. I mean, I this is 480. I think we can really. I mean, if this market really, okay, I'm going to cancel. We're, we're now $3 uh, in the money here on Meta and could get a lot more spicy. Uh, we're going to do sector watch, and then when we get back, we'll talk about what's for lunch. Uh, I think you might like it today, so stay tuned for that one uh, as we get ready to go. I think you'll like it too, Rob, so stay tuned. What's for lunch coming up after the break? Let's go over to Adara. The meta and TikTok situation actually being discussed right now in CNBC, so just be aware of that. Basically, some comments coming out of former President Donald Trump with regards to Facebook being bad for the country and an enemy to the people. So meta here to the downside. Google and Apple, two of the few positive names here in this mega cap uh, tech space. Generally, the technology services and electronic technology sectors, both very much to the downside. Health technology Eli Lilly leading this group to the downside overall. Finance a little bit more mixed a week. Producer manufacturing week, commercial services week. Retail trade pretty weak across the board here. Costco, second day to the downside after its earnings. But it is worth noting we have some strength here in consumer non-durables. Procter & Gamble here getting an upgrade from Truist and leading this group a little bit to the upside. Tesla also uh, an upside move here in consumer durables with an update on the situation with that Germany plant, guys. Sir. All right, all right, all right. Some Germany. Moderna's up 11% today. Yeah, this man. is like the, I have a couple of Biotech. like shot plays in my uh, TFS, shot plays in air quotes. I mean, shot plays a shot play. I don't need to put air quotes up uh, in my TFSA. This is one of them that like, yeah, whatever. Like it's either this stock is going to double or triple. Forget about double, probably triple. Uh, or it's going to absolutely flush me out. That's the kind of bucket that I think this one should be in. Uh, we'll see what happens. AM Dizzle, AMD is back up to 202. Anyways, uh, 203 has oh, been the spot. Yeah. If it gets back and does another curl, I'll look to short that. I just, yeah, we're trying to grab Boeing on this last little curl. Don't want to chase it down. I'm at 195, sorry, 191 and a half. Looking for the short in front of 192 on Boeing. That has been an absolute flush pretty much all day long. After what? Flat bottom break on Boeing. And uh, look, I like the stock too. I own it in my long term. Well, I don't like what's, what's happening. But if you, if you cannot see that on a chart and then don't look for the short, I mean, it's been support for quite some time. It's not that I think it's heading down to 175, but that, that will be the logical level if it continues to go lower here. So trying to short the pop here in Boeing. It's been productive, but the market's heading back up to these highs. I just got out of my last long on Rivian, and we'll look for hopefully what isn't the last short in AMD through that 203. 
All right, guys. Um, who's selling what? Oh, we got out, by the way, Meta. So Meta broke back above 484. So I took another piece there at 484. Just didn't want it to get back going there. I don't like that news. I mean, now it's now it's way back down. So we will give up a dollar. My bad uh, on that one. But the thing is, is like I didn't like what ever Adair. I couldn't really hear exactly, but what you're talking about, President Trump and Meta. So I'm gonna hold off on that. I mean, we've already got a. It's already two dollars in the money. We've already taken it out. Meta will be uh, P and L three here today. Still arm, still holding out hope. Um, as this has been an, like. Can you believe we had the top of the morning and the bottom there? Um, you know, we don't have that very first candle down there at 9.32, but the fact that we traded it like this is exactly the way we want to do it. Um, scalp out early, hold for, hold for a big move, hit some key levels, then bounce. So like that's exactly what we're doing, and it's and it's and it's a good one uh, there today. So um, you guys want to talk about Roblox right now? Okay, we can talk about Roblox. Five percent for forty-two. Good job, man. We actually bought some Roblox down at thirty-eight. Um, good good level there, but not recently. It was down into this dump. We didn't get that. We we didn't buy it a couple of days ago. We would have told you. Uh, we've been buying Roblox down into here. So let's see if it can continue to work out. I like the quarter, daily active users. Uh, the Lord knows I spend enough money on Roblox as it is, but everyone's favorite. We talked about it, so let's go. All right, it's what's for lunch. And today, you know, it's been a pretty good day today. There has been obviously a lot of chicken dinner winners, uh, as you can see. And if you're excited about chicken dinner winners, then I'm gonna hit this for you. And you may also be excited for lunch as well, because today's lunch, although nicely spiced, I'm hoping, is chicken once again. So congratulations to everybody what? looking forward to chicken on a day like today. I don't believe And it. today it is, and unfortunately for Adara, she will not be partaking in this because it is way too spicy for her. It is grilled jerk chicken. Holla at your boy. Which seems very, very mild, but, you know, to each their own. With Caribbean rice, which would be rice and peas, and steamed green beans. So, sounds like a very healthy and tasty lunch today. So, we'll see if that, if, especially if you like that green bean action, which I do. I like. I will beans. be stealing some of that jerk chicken because we're not going to get jerk chicken on our salad, obviously. Yep. It's like you don't put jerk chicken on a salad. I mean, I guess you could do whatever you could do whatever the heck you want to do, but that sounds absolutely, you know what, delicious uh, to me. So uh, I'll be partaking in a little bit of that. Uh, shout out to everyone in the chat that was yelling about that Roblox. It was like I was about to say something. I didn't even, yeah, just no. I, I was about, I was gonna say it if you didn't say it, but Roblox is gonna. I don't want to jinx it. Knock on wood. Roblox could close above the 50 period today, if it holds on to these levels. Like in that. So that's. It's 41.40 that it's breaking up from. That's your 50 period on the daily. It's already held at 200. Actually looks like 43 would be a pretty heavy breakout for Roblox. That's a good looking chart, man, for a test back at 47. But we'll see in the afternoon when things calm down a little bit. I want to go hunting for some, we already talked about some places to short pops. One of them was here. We did just barely miss the entry into Boeing. I'll back off and be patient waiting for another one. We just want to be able to pick our spots in there. AMD did stop out that one time. It hasn't really gotten back to that 203 just yet, so that's still looking like it could be in the pocket. NVIDIA, that breakout at 80, couldn't get past 82s. You've got some higher lows in here, not necessarily clean. I could see VWAP being a test, and that's that 865 Whoa, price whoops. coming back in again if it gets to VWAP. Ah. Rivian, we jumped out of it, and it's still right back up at that top, but it failed 13.5 on the actual breakout, so I'd look for a dip, maybe the quarters or the 13 evens, and then we'd rinse and repeat. So it's, like I said, it's been a productive warning. Just gotta be patient with some of these re-entry trades. Looking for some new names out there. I don't wanna chase Moderna up there as a name that's running. Uh, David Kovac saying Pfizer, I know they were having a good morning. They were talking up their cancer, uh, their, I guess their cancer, their exposure to uh, cancer drugs and whatnot, but. That's not that exciting for me. You're still underneath resistance on Pfizer. This needs to get above $28, as you can see here. 50 period, resistance at 28. What do you think it failed today? 28. Yeah. Pfizer can break 28 bucks. I think it's got some room to rally, but uh, not exciting until it actually makes that breakout. All right. Um, you might be wondering, so I did a similar mistake there. I made keystroke error, but got right back in. I tried to put an offer up near 485 for Meta because um, we wanted to get some more short, but now the market's above VWAP here and really starting to cook upside. So we'll hold on to this short. 
um, and wait to see what happens at 485. Give it to like to 4550. But if this market really gets cooking, then we know that Meta can go, man. I mean, it's it's down four and a half percent right now, um, and here we go. So now it's starting to cook. So watch out for 485, trying to break long right now on Meta. Here it goes. So we're just going to try another short. Oh, watch out. Oh no, we're about to get stopped out. 485.50 breaks, and we are out of that one. So we'll see uh, if that does come in or down right now. But it looks like it's going to the other way uh, and break to the long side as this market is taking VWAP right now. And that's a very, very dangerous thing to be in. We don't necessarily want to be in shorts when the market starts to rip like this. So we'll be very, very careful here with this trade. And in fact, start to take some out right now. Bang, bang, bang. Right, taking some out to the downside right now as it just failed up there at 485, but we just took some out in the 70s. So licking our wounds a little bit here. If it tanks, great. But we just took some out there for flat on meta, hoping that we can get a bigger push down. Here it comes. We'll take some. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll take some right there on meta as there it is. There's the flush back down for that one. So that was good, man. And this is, again, we're learning every single day uh, on the show. You know, like, I don't need to hold that all the way up to 485.50. If we can save some, preserve some capital and get that out when it comes back, see, when it comes back down like that, then that's exactly what we do. I look over at my net and it's dirt off my shoulder. So that's, that's the whole point, you know, take it out, especially these big bad names. You're not going to hold meta for 50 cent hits or anything like that. You're going to have to be more aggressive because you get 50 cent winners in a second. The spread on meta is 30 cents. So... Um, there it is, but we do get hit on that last piece. Uh, but there we go for Meta, trying to make some moves right now. Yeah, Meta is flying. NVIDIA can't seem to hold 880. Like, I either wanted holding 880 and breaking out the top or pulling back into 70s or VWAP for a re-entry back into this one. It's just not giving you the goods. And Boeing can't even... I mean, look, it's now it's back up to VWAP. I, we, we missed this curl here. We're looking to get it on the way back in. Now that it's getting close to VWAP, I just need to see it look for a top. If it makes that little bit of a curl like it did there, like it did there, then I'm going I'm to jump into the short. I don't want to be long Boeing today. If I'm long Boeing today, then it must be in the 180s. Oh, yeah, that's, I can't even see another way that I'd be long. Maybe something above VWAP, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, I do think it's starting to put in that curl, so I have my eyes locked and loaded on it, but I want to be patient, patient, patient. Uh, Honest Abe. Hey, what up? Great name. What do we think about a PayPal 60 break? I don't know, because I haven't looked at PayPal today. Um, Adara was talking a little bit about square, or block, as they would say, for a 60 break. That doesn't look, on first glance, that doesn't look bad, but when in doubt, zoom out. One of the things I'm not a huge fan of is breakouts into overhead resistance, but I think you've got some room to like 60s or 70s. So if I was taking a break, I'd usually want it breaking the actual high of the day, and there's a little bit of room up there. It's not bad, it just doesn't really, that's not a setup for me at this time of day. Uh, let's go to Adara. I believe we've got money talks. USD yeah. was making some moves. Yeah. USD still below 103 here, but trying to climb back up right now. We're at 102.88, and we are seeing a trying to make a little bit of a recovery from those massive moves down on Wednesday and Thursday of last week while uh, we had Fed Chair Jerome Powell in front of Congress and the Senate. So trying to make a big move back up here, but still not too much happening. We do have lots of economic data, though, to keep an eye on heading into the rest of this week, including a CPI print coming tomorrow, PPI coming on Thursday, and Michigan Consumer Sentiment coming on Friday. So definitely some more things down the pipeline, including the Fed meeting next week. So lots to keep an eye on right now, uh, but not too much happening at this second here with the DXY. Also worth noting, uh, the Japanese yen to the USD, so the JPY to USD relationship, we have been seeing a bit of a move up here for the JPY against the USD, and this one's worth keeping an eye on as well with the, the uh, Bank of Japan set to meet next week, actually talk of stopping the negative interest rates because they did see a positive revision uh, for their growth numbers. So could be continued strength for the JPY here against the USD, guys. Yes, sir. And thank you very much for that, Adair. With seven minutes to go, eight minutes to go until we pop on over to uh, the midday, going to be talking about some volatility in how to trade. But uh, never fear. That's because good. if you are, like if you want to follow along with the trades while you're learning about volatility, um, we do have back up and running. It's the dashboard on More Trader TV uh, yeah. live. So check that one out. It will have the positions. I'm only in Boeing, so that's correct. Sean is Long Apple, so that's correct, correct. I think. Yep. Uh, yeah, so that looks pretty good. And you'll have the news in there. You'll have the, I guess, your runner, bigger, biggest movers of the day. 
I almost like some way that would not only show some of the small cap runners, but we'll figure that one out. Economic calendar, you do have uh, some bond auctions at 1 o'clock, so you'll see that okay. on the calendar. So follow along. It'll be there the entire time. Uh, you can always ask us in the chat for clarifications and stuff if you have any questions there. There's Russ Bowles. Okay, okay, so okay. NVIDIA, bye-bye. Like two seconds ago, I'm not, I know, making, it's crazy. I'm not making this up. Remember I was saying in, in video, I'm looking for NVIDIA at VWAP? It just looked like it was going to break 875 when I was geared up to buy the dip in front of VWAP on. That's the last thing I was looking at before I just talked about that. I look over and NVIDIA is at $885. So obviously I won't be buying the dip into VWAP on this right now because NVIDIA is deciding to rip faces off. Um, 85 has already been a break. Maybe we look for the dip into 875 here if that's going to be the next trade. Seriously, NVIDIA? It was just tracking into a dip into VWAP, I swear. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're not wrong about that. Because um, I'm watching here Talk AMD as well, up to 204. Finally getting, look, we've already, AMD is going to be my number one name, and good thing we got out of it, that's for sure, uh, as that's still going to the upside. See, we just, we hit it early and it worked, and then late it worked. Well, mid, middle, of the, middle of the period it worked, but then late in the period it did not, and we got in and out there, and thankfully we were able to get in and out of that, and now we'll wait. I was waiting at 203.75. It just got to 203.50 there, and again, we're just trying to short it off of sort of yesterday's, Friday's closing price. Uh, you see where that big event was there. 208 was the, where that was. So right now we'll see if we get some love uh, back in on that. Oh, uh, this just came in and came out. I didn't even... So we shorted arm in front of 130, but with this market really blasting up, we'll, we'll only take 30 cent hit there as it ripped, or 25 cent hit, we got out of 25s there. So nice hit there on arm, but it, did, it didn't have a last hit there as it broke above 130, which was our indicated level. So the market's really starting to go upside again now. Uh, we just took Apple there on these bottom picks. So here comes Apple right back up to the upside. We'll see if we get something out at 56. So there it is. Nice take on Apple right back in again uh, to some of these bottoms for AAPL. So let's see if that one can kiss, uh, kiss that bottom and then hopefully get going back up uh, as we go back up to the upside right there. Feel it with a kiss. Yeah, I just got a kiss from my wife. So that's why I said that. So shout, shout out to her as well as uh, the kids are at hockey camp right now. So, uh, all right, nice move. It's March break around here. So they got a week off. Um, all right, so there's 60s coming through again on Apple. Let's see if we get an out. Give me that out at 60. There it is, 15 cent winner there for Apple. We'll short AMD, sorry, excuse my voice, in and around 203.75. And that's coming in right now. Recent high on AMD happening as we speak as NVIDIA. NVIDIA is going to take 900. Um, Probably it's gotta today. Get to 91st. I don't know if there was news there, but like we're really starting to pop up on these chip names. So I can't get a dip, so I take the local break on NVIDIA. I'm just gonna take scalp trades on this thing on the way if it never gives me the bigger dip price. So I'm gonna go to 888 here. Uh, I think I don't like breakouts at this time of day, so I'm gonna do what I should have done last time, which is just scalp out the entire thing on NVIDIA. Boeing looks like it's gonna take out VWAP, so we'll probably get stopped out of our second trade in Boeing. Like I'm, I'm expecting these br mini breaks to do what it did here. Mini breakout, just grab your couple of bucks and then pull back in. I think 880 or 875 is where I want to re-engage, so I'm back into only Boeing. But as you mentioned, it is March break, and my wife, like I slept like I had a terrible sleep last night. And I'm tired, not because of the, not because of the time shift. No, I had a terrible sleep last night. Too. No, but so my wife was dropping our daughter off at grandma camp which is my, my in-laws, which is just one up north. But she had to take my nephew, her, um, her sister's son, all the way back to Guelph. So right. I just said, look, I'm one of those. I'm one of those. I said, Can you just message me when you leave. I yeah. just want to know what time you left. So I have an idea. I mean, you're a caring husband? Oh, my God, Neil. No, I don't want to call myself a warrior ward or anything. No, but caring then, husband, I would But use. then she didn't hit send. So it's like I'm going to go to sleep last night, and I had not heard from her. And I know right. she's driving all the way up to Guelph and then coming back, which is... It's, it's a couple of hours one way and then another hour back home. To Guelph? So I couldn't, no, no, from, from, oh, yeah, from yeah, Lillia yeah, yeah. to yeah, Guelph yeah, right, and right, then from right. Guelph yeah, back that's, here. That's decent. And I hadn't heard from her, so I'm like, I'm having all kinds of trouble getting to sleep. By the time I actually fall asleep, uh, for real, is when she got back home at like midnight. So I then get up in like four and a half hours, so I didn't get a lot of sleep. No, I don't tr track her location, Ram Ram. I'm not, what? She did, Ram Ram said in my ear, I need to track my wife's location like a regular person. Uh, is that, a, that, I don't think that's I can track, I, I can do that to my wife. I think we have, you know what, there's an app that we have that I don't think we ever use, but you're probably not wrong about that. But anyways, I didn't get a great sleep last night over it. 
Uh, but uh, it is what it is. The, the, the time shift, you get used to it. Like, I find, like, the worst is in the morning yesterday yeah. uh, for me. My daughter had some issues with it because she still woke up at a regular time. She didn't sleep enough. Uh, Ram Ram needs a doctor, apparently. It's for safety, TikTok. I understand. You know what? I know there's an app that she's said, and we should have it, but uh, I'll get on that at some point. You guys aren't, you guys aren't wrong about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I think you could just do it with Google now, can't you? I probably can. Like, we're both Androids. I, I'm, I'm sure there's something that we could obviously be using, and I'm, you, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the chat any second now. Uh, with two minutes to go, I want to buy a dip in NVIDIA if we can get it. I would hope to not get stopped out on Boeing. And, uh, oh, yeah. It was one, what was it? Oh, Google. Before we, before we get out of here, Alphabet. I'm going to try and pick up Alphabet on VWAP. Alphabet's been holding steady up 2%. I like, how, look how well it's been holding VWAP. I'm going to buy the dip on Alphabet at VWAP. I don't know why we hadn't been doing this. Look how clean that's been all morning long on Google. All right, guys. Um, so far, so good. We, we should have shorted some AMD there. It's, it's trying to go back up to the upside. We'll short a little bit against 204 right now. Uh, thank you, Bears vs. Bulls. Thank you to everybody uh, up there. Um, it, it's been such a great day. And we just want to thank everybody for watching. It's 10.58 right now. You're going to hear uh, Learn to Trade from the Midday Show, both Adara and Sharif, ready to get locked and loaded. And then we'll be back here at 2 o'clock. So that's all good, man. I'm going to go uh, right after this, go for a little walk around, as I always do. Uh, call the fam, make sure everything is all good on that one. And it's 11 o'clock already. So what a good day it's been here um, one more time today. So just, again, Rivian is something I'm going to be looking at. We nailed that 1250 dip, but unfortunately, we didn't have the bid. So we had the bid at 1250, it went to 1255. Congratulations, Renata, for that. I'm going to cancel that. That was another long. The other long that we wanted was Alibaba. Obviously, that got started early, and then we could have bought it back at the 50 period and should have. Missed opportunity there. We'll see if Alibaba gets back down to 75. Doesn't really look like it. And let's just, let's just nurse this long right now on Apple. So we'll, we'll see uh, if we're able to get any love here for Apple long. And if not, we have our outs breaking down through 172 or change on Apple. So, so far so good. We're just long right now. We've gotten some out. We did pick a nice little level there at the 200 period to get long at 30s and then got them out here in the 50s again. So that's kind of what we're doing with Apple and all is good uh, back over on this side. So, hey man, it'll be jerk chicken. So uh, maybe Adara might give it a second round like shot there today. Um, she is going to try because she's a, she's a trooper, I just heard there. So uh, we'll try that, and yeah, we'll be back at uh, 2 o'clock. I think she just was, I think she was a little bit surprised by it, but now you get prepared. That's you're right. Be, it actually isn't that spicy. If you're a caterer no. uh, to an office, you're not going to have ridiculously spicy jerk chicken because it has to be able to fill, fulfill everybody's palate. Uh, so we'll enjoy it. We'll come back at 2. If you want to check the positions, remember, more Trader TV Live. The dashboard is up and running, so you can always check that out. But for now... Let's go learn about some volatility. Yeah, why not? What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. I'm Sharif.